before I begin, let me direct the committee secretary to uh, acknowledge our resource persons for this morning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, may, may we acknowledge the virtual presence of our guests from the Department of Health, Director Faith Alberto, Director, Disease Prevention and Control Bureau, Mr. Erickson A. Feliciano, Development Management Officer 4, We have Mr. Rodley Desmond Daniel Carsa, Head Policy and Technology Section from the Department of Education. We have Yusek Josdado M. San Antonio. Good morning, sir. Uh, Yusek Nepomuceno Malaluan. From Regional Director, Region 6, Mr. Wilfredo Cabral. From the Department of Interior and Local Government, uh, USEC Rico Judge Hanbier Echeverri. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. From the Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines, Mr. Jared Clarianes. From People's Television Network, we have Ms. Catherine Clue de Castro, General Manager, with Marie Nicolas Corporate Planning Head. From the NDRRMC, Mr. Manuel Rivera Jr., Chief, DRRM Development and Standards Division. From the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, Mr. Rex Ubach Jr. From the Coordinating Council of Private Educational Association, or COCOPEA, Attorney Joseph Noel M. Estrada. From DICT, we have Mr. Omar Sana. And from the DSWD, Ms. Mary Grace Blando. From the union, sorry, that's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you. Uh, did we miss any group? Uh, did we fail to recognize any uh, any uh, resource person? Pwede ho kayong mag register verbally. All right, kung wala naman po, uh, let me ask to uh, accommodate everyone. We will try our best to uh, uh, hear everyone out, but uh, please bear with us as we go along. Uh, today we'll be tackling um, uh, a few bills and also two topics. Uh, the first part of this hearing will be an update from DepEd on where we are as to the class opening this coming August 24. And then the second part of the uh, uh, hearing will be tackling several bills that concerns with um, uh, uh, epidemic preparedness, disaster preparedness, and um, uh, uh, the new normal of uh, the education sector. And let me just read into the records the bills that were filed by several of our centers. Uh, SBN 1674 filed by Center Angara. Uh, SBN 1565 filed by yours truly, SBN 1460 filed by Center. And this year's school opening is very challenging at best. And uh, I know there are a lot of um, um, uh, issues that we need to resolve and a lot of uh, tasks that we need to resolve 
Um, but I wholeheartedly support the school opening this coming August 24 uh, because uh, we need to make sure that learning continues and no one will left, be left behind. Um, dapat ho, kahit na sa ganitong pandemya, uh, wala pong batang may iwanan sa pag-aaral, lalo na yung mga mahirap natin mga kabataan. Uh, this is a time to make sure that uh, education and learning continues and we will exhaust all means to make sure that um, learning will continue uh, especially to our poor constituents. But having said that, I know there are a lot of challenges. There are a lot of issues that we need to tackle. I know that the senators have a lot of questions that they want to uh, expound on. Um, uh, um, and um, right now, we uh, we will now turn over the uh, floor to um, Yusek Malaluan, I think, no? who will give us a, an update on where we are uh, in so far as the school opening is concerned. So I turn over the floor to you, Sik Malaluan. Uh, yes, uh, good morning, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members of uh, the Senate uh, uh, present this morning, uh, as well as uh, all our co-workers from uh, the Executive Department uh, that are present and all education advocates uh, that are present also as resource persons. Uh, I am joined by a number of our uh, our uh, undersecretaries and uh, officials that will uh, assist uh, and uh, respond to the queries as uh, uh, which are under their respective jurisdiction. Uh, but if I may be allowed, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I would like to give a, a summary, uh, an opening summary of the uh, readiness update uh, of where we are at the, as of today. Uh, so, with the permission of the chair, uh, if yes, go ahead. Think, yes, uh, be assisted by my staff uh, for a short uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, next slide, please. Ang atin pong uh, paghahanda ay, uh, as mentioned by the chair, very challenging, and uh, this is uh, new for us. Uh, but we are taking this challenge as observed by the uh, honourable chair. Uh, there is a need to ensure. Uh, that learning continues in a safe manner in this time of COVID. And uh, our readiness components, as you will see, uh, is quite uh, complicated and very much involved, uh, comprising nine uh, readiness components. Uh, magmula po dun sa ating uh, pagpapatala uh, under the conditions of uh, this pandemic uh, or enrollment, uh, yun pong ating adjustments na ginawa sa ating curriculum uh, ang adjustments na ginawa sa paghahatid ng uh, pagtuturo sa ating mga uh, mag-aaral, ang ating adjustments na ginawa din sa learning resources na ginagamit ng mga mag-aaral uh, at kaakibat nito ay yung assessment changes and of course the uh, teacher training that has to continue the, that has to be done uh, pag mobilize ng uh, very limited resources that we have uh, under conditions of extreme stress and uh, of course the putting in place health standards and finally uh, ang kaya lang pong ibigay ng uh, central office ay ang uh, framework options and support but at the end of the day uh, ang atin po mga field units ang may tungkulin ay contextualize ito sa mga kondisyon ng uh, kanilang nasasakupan uh, in regions divisions and schools uh, because there will be no one size fits all uh, they must be uh, adaptive as well as responsive to the uh, concrete conditions on the ground. So, dito po sa mga sham na uh, components na ito, uh, allow me to give a, a latest updates. Uh, next slide. Uh, with respect to enrollment po, as of today, uh, no, as of uh, yesterday at 5.30 p.m., uh, we have a total enrollment in both public and private schools of uh, 23, uh, a little over 23 million. Uh, and this already corresponds to uh, more than 83% of our enrollment last year. Uh, ito pong uh, 83% na ito ay higit na sa uh, 80% na adjusted target that we submitted to NEDA, anticipating that there will really be a reduction in enrollment because of the uh, constraints and conditions this uh, uh, school year. 
Um, at uh, pero sa pampublikong mga, mga paralan po ay ang ating uh, uh, a big part of this 23 uh, million uh, overall enrollment is accounted for by the public schools. Ang ating pong enrollment ay almost nasa 21.3 million enrollment last year. And uh, uh, we, we hope that this will still increase but uh, expectedly it will not be uh, nearer the level that the enrollment rate has happened in the public sector. And uh, ito pong, uh, uh, we have also monitored that there is already about uh, 380,000 or so learners from the private schools that we have monitored uh, having transferred to the uh, public schools. Next slide, please. So, yun po yung sa unang readiness component sa enrollment. Ito po ang ating uh, enrollment figures. Ang pangalawa ay hindi ko itatalakayan ng malalim ito. Ay, this is just a pag-uulit ng mga uh, nabanggit na natin. Ang uh, pangalawang uh, paghanda na ginawa ng Department of Education ay ripasuhin yung ating full K-12 curriculum and identify the most essential learning competencies uh, anticipating the difficulty of uh, learning delivery as well as the need to adapt uh, learning resources, we identified uh, the most essential learning com competencies to be the applicable uh, curriculum uh, only for these uh, conditions of this school year. So from a full K-12 to uh, learning competencies of over 14,000 Learning competencies relates to the knowledge, skills, and attitudes that must be taught to the students. Uh, we have identified about 5,689 most essential learning competencies, the indispensable learning competencies that need to be uh, covered uh, in the current uh, school year. Uh, ang pangatlo po, next slide please na. Uh, component ng readiness ay yung uh, pag-adapt natin ng ating learning delivery modalities at uh, inuulit po namin na walang mangyayaring face-to-face -face na mga klase uh, sa mga paaralan pagbubukas ng uh, school year ngayong Agosto 24. Lahat po yan ay magiging through distance learning modalities which will be a combination of what we call the modular distance learning uh, kung saan yun pong ating mga textbooks ay sinusuhayan o kinukomplement ng self-learning modules uh, para maging gabay ng mga bata for self-directed learning and with assistance of uh, also instructional partners at home, uh, whether they be parents, uh, siblings, or uh, in the absence of uh, anybody from the home, uh, volunteers that can assist uh, in case that the student uh, really require uh, a instructional assistance that the teacher cannot give uh, remotely or no household member can provide. Uh, so ito po ang magiging uh, backbone ng ating uh, distance learning is the modular uh, together with the textbooks that we have. But they will be complemented as well uh, where possible uh, through online uh, learning uh, where there is connectivity as well as gadgets. At yan po ay nalalaman namin dahil yung aming enrollment ay sinamahan natin ng uh, survey. So we uh, ask the uh, households and the learners to accomplish a learner enrollment and survey form uh, that provides us the information on the capacity of the learner and the preference of the learners for distance learning. Uh, and finally, uh, to be complemented as well by television, and uh, radio-based uh, instruction. Yung pang-apat po na component ng paghahanda ay yung pag-adapt natin ng ating mga learning resources. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, ang uh, ating pong existing textbooks ay gagamitin pa rin at ito po ay ating iminamap sa ating most essential learning competency. So uh, kung ano ang uh, present inventory ng ating mga paaralan, ng mga textbooks na siyang ginagamit kung ang mga bata ay pumapasok sa paaralan ay ito po ay bibigay din, uh, ipahihiram sa mga bata para madala sa kanilang mga tahanan. Uh, uh, at gagaya ng nabanggit ko, uh, dahil uh, ang, ang mga aklat pong ito ay na-design 
uh, for classroom instruction at uh, ang guro ay kasama nila sa uh, habang sila ay pumapasok sa paaralan uh, yan po ay dahil magbabago yung uh, kondisyon at paghahatid ng pagtuturo ay kailangang uh, magbigay tayo nitong tinatawag nating self-learning modules para maging gabay ng mga bata uh, in uh, in a taking their uh, lessons at home. Uh, bukod po dun sa self-learning modules na meron na ding mga, uh, mga assessment uh, questions, ay maari po itong isupplement pa ng mga guro ng uh, activity sheets. Uh, uh, so most of these are uh, teacher-made activity sheets, but we, as I will show later, Mayroon din po tayong supplemental learning resources mula sa mga existing partners. Uh, uh, mula po dun sa self-learning modules ay aming uh, uh, sinusubukan na may convert pa ang kung hanggang makakaya namin to uh, eh, educational videos or radio-based scripts uh, or radio scripts na maaring ihatid uh, through a, a broadcast medium, whether a, a television or uh, radio. Uh, at uh, bukod po dyan sa mga uh, internally produced uh, learning resources ng uh, Department of Education ay uh, meron din po tayong uh, mga supplemental learning materials na naka-align uh, din sa ating most essential learning competencies mula sa mga uh, nag uh, oh, bibigay uh, ng partnerships at nag offer ng kanilang learning resources at yan po ay in-evaluate natin kung alin ang pinaka uh, mabisang mga uh, pang uh, agapay na mga uh, additional learning resources and uh, we will deploy them also uh, this school year. Uh, next slide please. Uh, ito po ang uh, uh, paglalarawan nung uh, sinabi nating learning resources so kagaya po dito sa uh, picture sa kaliwa uh, ako ay pumasyal ng isang araw uh, nung linggo actually and lunes uh, during the kickoff in one small school here in Batanga City actually an announced uh, and I saw that uh, they have uh, already set up the uh, existing textbooks for distribution to the learners and they are now completing the uh, self-learning uh, modules. They have already uh, set a schedule for uh, a retrieval by parents by sitio uh, on the opening of uh, classes. Ito naman pong sa pangalawang larawan ay uh, uh, halimbawa ng aming self-learning modules uh, nakalagay po dyan yung subject, uh, pang ilang module ito, uh, they are in consecutive order uh, for the duration of the uh, school year. At ito pong nasa gitnang ito na self-learning modules ay kung may panahon kami na may convert into interactive uh, uh, self-learning modules, uh, may tip typographical error, that's ESLMs. Uh, ang ibig sabihin po nito ay uh, the same content, uh, which is in just plain PDF format, is being converted in, uh, into a, a, a format uh, that uh, may be used uh, with some interactive components. Kagaya ng ito pong... Uh, Nasa kaliwang bahagi ng first picture dito sa third uh, sa third picture na ito, yung nasa mataas na bahagi, nakikita dito na yung outline ay nasa kaliwang bahagi at maaring puntahan ng bata interactively using a certain program. At uh, gayon din, uh, merong interactive activities na maaari nilang sagutin at uh, isubmit yung sagot at uh, it will electron eh, digitally uh, uh, return a a uh, a result kung tama o mali ba yung uh, sagot. Uh, ang napakalaki pong uh, katanungan na umiikot sa sa pag-uusap sa kahandaan ngayon ay so handa na ba itong mga materyales na mga ito? Uh, at uh, as I mentioned, ito pong existing textbooks ay yan naman ay ng mga nasa paaralan at so yan ay uh, ang magkakaproblema dyan ay kung kulang, uh, which is the same problem whether or not 
there is COVID. So kung may uh, shortfall tayo talaga in the number of textbooks, whether or not the, the students will go to school or not, ay uh, yung kakulangan ay naroon pa din. Pero kagaya ng nakita po ninyo, kung ang inventory natin ay sapat, ay itong mga aklat na ito ay kasama sa learning resources na mabibigay. Ang mga bago pong mga learning resources ay itong mga nasa bandang kanan dahil uh, ito po ay kailangang uh, ibigay sa kanila in digital format or in printed format. At uh, next slide, ito po yung uh, latest report sa amin ng uh, through the self-assessment of our field units uh, for the first quarter uh, printing ng mga uh, modules natin uh, ang uh, 38 uh, bahagdan uh, ng ating lahat ng uh, mga division sa uh, buong bansa uh, liban sa BARM ay uh, nasa more than 50% uh, completion of the first quarter uh, printing and uh, about 61% uh, uh, out of the uh, 214 SDOs are, are still in the less than 50%. Uh, for the first quarter. Uh, pero ang gusto ko rin lang pong ipahatid ay uh, ang prioridad dito ay yung at least the first two weeks available. Kasi pag sinabi po natin first quarter, ibig sabihin niyan ay yung kabuang para sa dalawang buwan uh, ng uh, pag-aaral ng mga bata. So hindi naman po kailangang ibigay lahat yung buong dalawang buwan. So ang commitment sa atin ng field units natin is that at least the first two weeks uh, worth of uh, self-learning modules to complement our textbooks uh, shall be available and the succeeding weeks shall be made available on a rolling basis. Uh, bukod po dyan, ay maaari nating sabihin na may buffer tayo na at least one week dahil yung unang linggo po ng uh, pagbubukas ng klase ay syempre i-devote ito sa pagbibigay ng orientation, ng psychosocial interventions at hindi pa uh, necessarily ay formal na pag-uumpisa ng lessons nila. Uh, Siyempre, kailangan din ng familiarization. Uh, halimbawa, yun pong aking uh, paaralan na binisita na nabanggit ko kanina na maliit na elementary school dito sa Batangas City ay nakapag-orient pa lamang sila ng mga magulang na mayroong uh, internet uh, connectivity. Uh, so, pag uh, yung mga orientation nila, mangyayari pa lamang doon sa schedule nila ng retrieval ng parents in the first uh, uh, days of classes and uh, hindi po isang araw lang ang retrieval dahil dinivide nila halimbawa by sitio itong pag-retrieve para makapag-social uh, distancing pa rin dito sa mga uh, paralan. Uh, next slide. Uh, ito pong TV and radio-based instruction, ang updates po nito ay hindi ko alam Mr. kung Chair. nakuto na. Mr. Chair? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Chair? Uh, it, uh, yes, uh, uh, Senator Nancy. With your permission, Mr. Chair, before we move to the next slide, pwede ko lang itanong kay Yusek Malaluan kung may data na siya na may lugar ba na 100% na natapos yung printing. Because the data that you gave, the data that you gave us right now is 50% lang eh. Meron Apo. ba lugar na talagang tapos na yung printing, hindi na problema yung kakulangan ng um, materyales? Uh, mayroon pong iba't ibang uh, lugar na may 80 to 100%. So, hindi po nakareflect dito. Maari natin yung i-reflect uh, later. Ang isa po sa... Uh, uh, ganito din po yung nangyari uh, sa, sa aspetong ito. Uh, nagkaroon po ng downloading ang ating uh, central office ng uh, pondo uh, to the regions with, down to the divisions. But even earlier, I, we have already authorized the utilization of the MOOE, yung mga eskwelahan. So marami po tayong mga uh, eskwelahan that were able to uh, already finance ahead of the downloading of the central office funds. Bukod po dito, uh, may mga lugar tayo na uh, supported by the uh, uh, SEF local government unit. So, iba-iba po yung level, tama po kayo, uh, na mayro, kung i-divide natin pa uh, itong uh, number na ito, we can submit to the Senate uh, kung sino yung nasa 50 to 75 
uh, and then 75 to 100 uh, percent. Uh, pero may nakita po kami na may mga up to the uh, 75 to 100 percent level of completion of the first quarter. Uh, but as I mentioned, ang first quarter po ay two months worth po yan ng SLM. So ang gusto po nating maisiguro ay yung first uh, two weeks ay uh, nakahanda at the opening of classes as a minimum for all of our units, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Chair. Senator Nancy, you're on mute. Thank you. Ah, Ms. Sek Malaluan, kasi may kumakalat din ngayon na parang may mga nag fundraising for bond paper, for photocopying. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there um, truth na parang may mga lugar na hindi nila kaya magpa-photocopy ng mga materyales na kailangan ibigay din sa mga estudyante? Well, uh, ang atin pong at makikita mamaya dun sa slide ko dun sa resource mobilization ay uh, ang atin pong sources ng uh, pondo ay yung uh, downloaded funds uh, natin at ang atin pong uh, na eh, ibig sabihin, na realign from our existing uh, budgets for this is about uh, uh, I think about 9 uh, billion at kulang po ito. Uh, in other words, kung titingnan natin uh, on a one-to-one -one, uh, basis ay uh, kulang itong amount na ito. So ito po ay sinusupplement ng, uh, ng uh, uh, SEF, ng mga local government units, sometimes in the form of uh, a printing equipment like risographs, paper, uh, or even uh, actual funds. Uh, uh, ang pangatlo po uh, na... Uh, source na ay yun yung sinabi ko kanina na inauthorize na na nasa hawak na ng mga uh, eskwelahan natin na MOOE na maaari nilang uh, gamitin. Uh, pero may pang-apat pong component yan, yung Brigada Eskwela. At talaga namang ang ating Brigada Eskwela ay may national and local uh, component. Uh, although ito po ay sana ay at the school level ang, uh, ang paghingi uh, ng uh, suporta sa Immediate community, hindi po ito sa pilitan, yun pong mga magulang siguro na nalapitan ng ating mga guro ay uh, should not feel compelled to uh, give their contributions. But totoo po yung sinasabi nyo, uh, in fact, even in the uh, school that I went to, I, I asked them po anong kailangan nila. I asked if they needed paper, eh, ang sabi nila maraming nagbigay sa kanila ng uh, paper. Uh, Ang iba po na ginagamit nila ay hindi for SLMs uh, na printing. Ang iba ay maaring may, may SLMs kung dinownload from the division to the school. Uh, pero yun pong nabanggit ko kanina, yung ibang mga guru natin ay gustong magdagdag ng uh, activity sheets, not just those that are uh, contained in the uh, SLMs itself. And uh, of course, yun pong... Uh, activity sheets na ganyan ay hindi nasa decentralized na sa mga guro natin and uh, siguro yun ang yung iba ay uh, in fact ang nabanggit sa akin ay uh, gusto nila yung paralan na pinuntahan ko na mag uh, eh, supplement pa ng activity sheets at ang kulang nila daw ay printer ink so pag wala na silang MOOE o source ng funds ay eh, talaga pong may mga paaralan tayo at mga minsan ay mga guro na humihingi ng uh, uh, ng contributions uh, or donations uh, to supplement whatever we have. Dahil talaga naman pong uh, kulang. Uh, uh, in our, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Senator, in our original financing eh, eh, strategy, eh, kasama po dapat doon ay ang paghingi ng supplemental budget. But we actually did not uh, pursue that uh, because in our uh, coordination with uh, the DBM, ay uh, wala na rin naman talagang uh, puwang uh, for supplemental budget given the uh, uh, the amount that is needed uh, uh, for Bayanihan 2, for economic recovery, uh, in a condition of depressed revenue. So yun po talaga, uh, Madam Senator, Mr. Chair, ang condition. So... Uh, your the reports that have come to you uh, uh, is happening on the ground, uh, Madam Chair, uh, uh, Madam Senator, Mr. Chair. 
yung sa paliluan dun sa table na pinersent nyo, um, yung less than 50%, sa tingin nyo ba makakahabol yan for the opening ng August 24, na at least kahit pa paano, more than 50% yung mamaprint ma nila? Uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Madam Senator, ang amin po, Mr. Chair, ang amin pong... Uh, E, ibig sabihin, ang commitment sa atin ay first two weeks. So, yung pong first two weeks and then on a rolling basis on succeeding weeks ay, uh, ibig sabihin, it might not, uh, uh, because as I mentioned, it's for two, two months uh, worth of SLMs, ay uh, pipilitin po natin na makapag over 50% lahat. Uh, but as I mentioned, the priority is to have at least the first two weeks available on August 24, uh, Madam, Madam Chair. We will, uh, we will see uh, this is updated uh, uh, regularly uh, and consistently now as we near the uh, opening. Uh, in fact, uh, last night po ay hanggang alas 9 yung ating... Uh, management committee with all the regional directors present and ang um, pinag-uusapan na namin doon ay uh, yung uh, exhibit picturing and looking at how uh, August 24 will will take place uh, madam chair so uh, we will we will try as you mentioned uh, na mag uh, over 50 itong mga ito uh, but uh, and hopefully dahil nga uh, meron tayong na download na uh, central uh, office funds in the last uh, if i'm not mistaken and usec an is here on the exact time that this was actually downloaded to the field ay makahabol itong uh, printing uh, materials uh, yun naman pong uh, naapektuhan ng uh, MECQ because uh, that is the report from our uh, regions ay yung pong ating uh, MECQ has uh, hampered the logistical operations of uh, uh, NCR and the uh, immediate provinces of uh, Region 4 and Region 3 for Bulacan, ay makikita naman po natin na yung ating NCR dito ay uh, mas malaking bahagi na ay uh, nasa more than uh, 56%. Uh, ang isang dahilan po dyan ay uh, itong NCR and parts of Region 4A and the immediate environs of uh, uh, NCR ay yun yung ma mas malaki ang capacity din ng mga local government units to support, uh, eh, supplement itong uh, uh, resources for uh, the printing of uh, SLMs, uh, uh, Madam Chair. All right. Uh, you said you can uh, finish your, you can continue and finish your presentation, your update. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, to proceed, ang sunod po na uh, ay yung pagsasalin uh, at hindi naman ito magiging 100%. This will be, this is intended to be complementary. Itong pagsasalin, itong ating uh, self-learning uh, modules into TV and radio-based instruction. Uh, Again, bago pong uh, larangan ito sa Department of Education, uh, including the uh, production as well as uh, uh, a pakikipag-ugnayan sa mga uh, broadcast and uh, uh, radio uh, stations. At uh, uh, yan po ay maibibigbahagi ang, ang detalye niyan by our technical working group for uh, TV and radio headed by Yusek Elaine Pasqua and Yusek Josna Dosan Antonio. Uh, gayon din po yung sa DepEd Commons uh, ay maaring uh, magbigay ng detalya yung ating uh, ICT service. Uh, pero ito pong DepEd Commons ay will follow the first two weeks na yung by two weeks na pag-upload parang two weeks in advance. So ang alam ko ay nag-uumpisa na na i-upload noong ating DepEd Commons yung first two weeks. And uh, uh, doon po sa aming, mayroon po kaming uh, Learning Resources and Platforms Committee uh, nagbigay na ng mga komento yung iba't ibang units into how the DepEd Commons look like, what improvements can be made. So, uh, and, uh, uh, but the, the specifics, uh, 
uh, Mr. Chair, as they will be asked uh, later, uh, will be uh, uh, responded to by uh, our undersecretaries that are directly responsible for this uh, aspects, uh, Mr. Chair. The next uh, slide is nabanggit ko po na hindi lamang uh, internal learning resources ang aming i-deploy. Kung hindi, uh, tinitingnan po din namin kung may mga supplemental learning resources na maaring manggaling sa mga partners natin na educators. Isa po dyan ay itong dynamic learning program uh, developed by Ramon Magsaysay Awardees for Education, uh, Dr. Chris Bernido and Dr. Uh, Maria Victoria uh, Bernido. Ito po ay even pre-COVID is already a teaching method that uh, promotes independent student learning. Kaya ito ay akbang-akma sa panahon na ito dahil talagang ang approach nito even before COVID is to uh, allow for uh, uh, self-learning uh, with a minimal uh, intervention by a learning facilitator or a teacher. Uh, at marami na po silang activity sheets. They have worked with uh, some, not just some private schools and their own school, but also with some uh, public schools. And uh, our public schools also attest to the effectiveness of this teaching method. Uh, ang mga activity sheets po nito, uh, ang nabanggit sa amin ay for most subjects in the junior and senior high school. Uh, in our last discussion with them, uh, they are also consolidating what they have for the elementary level. And uh, we will deploy them uh, as supplementary learning resources, but not in printed form, but available uh, digitally in the DepEd uh, Commons uh, for now. Uh, ito po yung alimbawa ng itong kanilang mga uh, learning activity sheets uh, by the Dynamic Learning Program. Isang alimbawa lang po itong inilagay ko dito, pero may iba pa po tayo na mga partners uh, that we have evaluated uh, to have a comprehensive uh, amount of learning resources mapped to the MELCs and will be uh, effective uh, options uh, for our teachers to deploy for distance learning. Uh, next slide. Uh, pang lima po dun sa ating uh, red sham na readiness component ay itong uh, assessment. Dahil sa bago ang uh, pamamaraan ng pagtuturo ay kailangang mag-adapt din kung paano ma-assess yung learning progress nila. Uh, ang isa po na hindi magagawa uh, ngayon ay yung mga uh, sit-down uh, pen and paper uh, tests uh, in classroom setting. So kailangan po itong ma-substitute. At uh, uh, sa kasalukuyan po ay uh, we are finalizing the review of the interim policy guidelines on assessment and grading. It will be issued, if not this week, early next week. Uh, kaya po nagtagal yan. Siyempre, bagong paraan din ito. We consulted, aside from the submission of our uh, Bureau of Learning Delivery, we also uh, consulted uh, a number of uh, assessment experts uh, from outside the department. Uh, and we also uh, undertook uh, focus group discussions with teachers themselves uh, to see how practical uh, a guide uh, itong aming draft na ito. At uh, uh, in fact, uh, marami sa mga, uh, sa mga uh, editing that we are proposing to CI uh, are inputs from uh, teachers on the ground uh, on the practicability of this uh, interim assessment uh, uh, guide at uh, ito po ay grounded on the following principles um, uh, kasama dito yung uh, a, a bigger uh, uh, component on what we call formative assessment uh, uh, taking rather than yung summative uh, assessments na ang uh, expression ay yung ng paper and pencil test at uh, yung nakagawian natin na like a final exam. Uh, uh, maari po itong ipaliwanag ng ating <clears throat> mga bureaus na kasama natin dito uh, for details. Uh, next slide. Ito po yung pang-anim ay yung teacher training. Uh, ito po ang uh, report sa atin uh, dun sa self-assessment then by field units. Ang atin pong training ay 
ginagampanan ng uh, iba't ibang units. Ang isa dyan ay yung National Educators Academy of the Philippines, ang ating pong ICTS or uh, ICT service uh, with respect to uh, digital uh, assisted uh, teaching. Ito pong ating DRRMS dahil dun sa ating health standards uh, at saka may, sa kanila din ang yung uh, in partnership with our school health division uh, ay yung wellness uh, including mental wellness ay under them. And our regions and divisions are also conducting their own orientations on the conduct of uh, uh, this this year uh, school year. And uh, but uh, there will be training opportunities that will continue throughout the school year. At alimbawa yung NEAP, uh, I am familiar with it because it is being supervised from out of the office of the secretary. Ang approach po natin ay uh, malaking bahagi yung practicum and. Uh, uh, eh, yung pong uh, training sa halip na maging balakid doon sa pagtuturo ng mga uh, guro I will assist them and make their uh, teaching in this time easier because it will include uh, uh, the learning resources itself and how they are uh, deployed. Uh, so dito po ay mas malaking bahagi talaga dahil uh, uh, syempre eh, every school must know uh, at least in uh, the uh, the very basic uh, on how this school year will be implemented at uh, sa self-reporting po nila ay uh, malaking bahagi na ang uh, greater than 50% of the target coverage. Uh, at mas maliit na bahagi na lamang ang nasa less than 50%. Uh, uh, next slide. Uh, ang pangpitong uh, uh, component ay uh, nabanggit ko yung resource mobilization kanina. So, yun yung recalibration ng DEPED budget through alignment and modification of our uh, PAPs or project activities and programs. Programs, uh, activities and projects. Uh, itong uh, use of uh, the available balance of the school MOE, use of SEF. Uh, mayroon din po tayong enhanced partnerships with development partners and access to deve official development assistance, uh, although some of them are still under negotiation. But uh, many of them are helping through technical assistance, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, sa panahon na ito. So uh, at times, it is not big in amount, but the impact is big also because of uh, the contribution to, uh, for example, policy development, policy review, uh, and so on. And the number five ay yung enhanced brigada eskwela natin to maximize uh, private sector contributions uh, in this time. Um, next slide. Ang pangwalo ay ito pong health standards dahil uh, kung makikita natin sa ating... Uh, uh, mga simulations and dry runs ay hindi uh, while uh, a big part will be work from home ay talagang may uh, physical component ang ating mga guro uh, na pupunta sa uh, paaralan uh, for a for a mobilization purposes for the delivery and also we'll have to work with uh, uh, the barangays uh, we'll have to administer yung retrieval uh, and pick up of uh, learning resources, yung physical learning resources. So talagang may component na ang mga guru natin uh, will have to uh, go in physically into uh, the school as their workplace. Uh, at syempre, ang kasama po dyan uh, ay yung general health and safety protocols natin. Uh, to increase the physical and mental resilience, reduce transmission, reduce contact, and reduce duration of infection. Uh, mayroon po tayong testing protocol, uh, uh, but that does not, uh, we do not call it mass testing dahil ito po ay indicated testing pa rin uh, in terms of uh, um, a symptom-based at saka exposure-based. Uh, but uh, uh, Alongside yung detection natin, so dapat ay 
at check pa dati kung mayroon bang may symptom, uh, may referral process din tayo, uh, and kung sakaling may exposure, then we have to do our own uh, contact uh, tracing from within the department uh, itself. Uh, kami po, simula pa nung Pebrero, ay nagbuo na ng COVID-19 task force. Yan ay has been continuing and has been giving us uh, daily situational reports. Uh, dahil yun po ating COVID-19 task force ay tagos hanggang sa field levels through our by activating our DRRM uh, unit. Uh, nasanay naman po dahil uh, ang Department of Education has to deal with uh, natural calamities year in and year out. So we have a an intact system for that. Ang uh, kaibahan nga lamang ay syempre ay bagong uh, klase ng disaster uh, ito at hindi naman uh, lahat ay nangangapa if we can say that uh, with respect to effective, uh, full effective management of this uh, COVID and uh, support mechanisms. Yung panghuli po uh, na component natin ng readiness ay yung regional uh, contextualization. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, at uh, uh, as I mentioned, wala pong one size fits all. At uh, sa totoo ay ang malaking uh, lessons natin at uh, learning from innovation uh, in the approaches uh, can be shown by our uh, field units. Iba-iba uh, pong uh, a, a approach under different conditions and uh, we learn from each other. Uh, alimbawa, itong Navo School in a Box, uh, ang isang naunang nagpakita nung kanilang uh, uh, strategy at maraming lugar ay adopted uh, the similar approach. Uh, uh, but mayroon pa kaming nakita na mga bagong approaches from our dry run and simulations. Uh, ang, alam ko po, I don't have the exact number uh, but uh, we have conducted, uh, I think, more than uh, uh, 300, I mean, close to 400 simulations around the country under various conditions. And uh, for the kickoff event natin nung lunes na nagkaroon ng uh, technical difficulties, I, we picked uh, 10, uh, 10 example uh, dry runs. And if uh, the chair will allow, uh, we just pick just one. Uh, video that uh, a short video that if the chair and the uh, honorable committee will allow uh, if we can show and that will end uh, my presentation mr chair yeah. Jusek, um i saw your presentation and at the end there are uh, a list of um videos that we can see uh kami na lang bahala to look at those videos later on no? so that we can save time uh, because okay. we have two uh, topics to deal with uh, for today. But uh, uh, I'll share your presentation to the members of the committee so they can uh, view the videos on their own leisure time. Uh, thank you very much, Yusek, uh, for that uh, update. And before we uh, receive questions, uh, I'd like to recognize Senator Bongo uh, for his opening remarks. Magandang umaga po, uh, Mr. Chair, at sa lahat po ng kasama natin ngayon sa hearing nito. Uh, Nelson Mandela once said, children are our uh, greatest uh, treasure. They are our future. I could not agree more. Our children's uh, safety and well-being are, are of uh, utmost importance. And it is our responsibility to ensure this, uh, not only in this time of uh, COVID-19, but also as we usher in the new normal that comes with it. This is precisely what the bills being discussed here today uh, seek to do and for which I express my full uh, support. Uh, ang mga inisyatibong ito ay ang mga hakbang para matulungan natin ang ating mga kabataan na maging handa, lalo na sa mga hamong dala ng new normal. Given the present situation, kinakailangan na makapag-adapt, uh, madagdagan o baguhin ang ating uh, kurikula para matugunan ang mga pangailangan ng ating mga kabataan ngayong new normal at para makabuo rin tayo ng isang better uh, normal. Bukod nito, uh, dapat sakop din ng ating mga pulisiyang pang-edukasyon ng kahit anumang krisis o sakuna na maaring dumating. Let's be more proactive in our legislation that, so that we can uh, uh, prepare better. Tulad ng sinabi ni Pangulong Duterte, hanggat 
walang bakuna para labanan ng COVID-19, walang face-to-face classes na magaganap. Dahil dito, importante na makapagbigay tayo ng alternative modes of uh, learning. Ang uh, hiling ko lang po sa ating mga opisyales ay ang pag- pag-aralan ang posibilidad na gamitin ang online at offline learning. Siyempre, ayaw nating maantala ang klase, ngunit mas prioridad pa rin ang kaligtasan at kalusugan ng lahat ng mga kabataan. Habang di pa po normal, sana wala na lang uh, bumagsak para hindi na po ma-pressure ang mga estudyante. In uh, transition to uh, online learning, dapat mabigyan ng pantay-pantay na oportunidad ang mga estudyante kahit uh, saan mang parte sila ng bansa at kahit anumang estado nila sa, sa buhay. Kung tayo nga dito sa Senado ay nahirapan sa transition to online, paano pa kaya sila? Bukod sa mga estudyante, dapat alalayan rin natin ang ating mga guro. Dapat may angkop na trainings din para sa kanila. Regarding disaster preparedness in schools, sang ayon po ako dito. This is why I uh, I am pushing for the creation of uh, Department of Disaster Resilience. One of uh, DDR's mandate is to work with our educational uh, institutions in uh, raising disaster awareness and preparedness. Maganda na magsimula na tayo ngayon. As we have realized in this uh, pandemic, the cooperation of our citizenry is crucial in complying with a lot of our necessary protocols, health or otherwise. This considering it is important that we educate and make our people aware of how they should behave during health emergencies and disasters at a very young age. Having said that, uh, magtulong-tulong po tayo para mas mapaghandaan at mapabuti ang pag-aaral at pagtuturo sa ating mga estudyante. Uh, maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Bongo, for the reminders and also the uh, 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 words of encouragement. Um, the floor is now open to questions. Any questions from our center? Senator Binay and then Senator Francis after. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ah, siguro bago ako mag-umpisa magtanong, Mr. Chair, pwede niyo follow up if you remember during the previous meeting, nag-request mo tayo ng mapping. Um, can we just get an update if they are ready to submit it? Uh-uh. Um, we have not received uh, any uh, mapping document or document that pertains to mapping from DepEd. Uh, maybe Chair, get, uh, an update from DepEd. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes, you say Kumali. Yung mapping po na hinihingi ng ating kagalang-galang Senadora Nancy Binay ay dapat po nakapaloob po doon sa regional uh, contextualized learning uh, uh, continuity plan po na kakasumiti lang po natin kaninang umaga po, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, bukod po doon, yung... yung uh, overview of where we are right now uh, dapat po ay uh, nakapalob din po dito sa sa slides nakakapakita lamang po ng aming pangalawang kalihim uh, nepo malaluan thank you po okay. mr chair okay so you sa kumali i'll repeat no yung uh, sinabit niyo kaninang umaga lang uh, contains the mapping uh, mapping meaning uh, identified areas where internet is prevalent uh, where um, teachers uh, have access to internet, all of these details, and doon ho yun. Apo, uh, uh, detalye po kung ilan po sa ating mga, uh, mga mag-aaral ang may access to internet, tama po yun. Pero baka po hindi yung uh, uh, itong lugar na ito ay uh, mayroong internet connectivity, ito ay wala, is more on... Uh, uh, yung sagot po ng mga bata kung meron po uh-huh. access to internet, kung meron po silang gadget, uh, meron po magulang na magagabay sa kanila. Mga ganong detalye po, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, we will, uh, I'll try to retrieve the document right now so we can show it uh, uh, on the screen uh, para real time yung pagpakita natin. So in the meantime, Senator Bina, you might want to ask other questions. Mr. Chair, we'll just wait for the submission. Um, siguro kay Yusek Malaluan, pwede balikan lang natin yung first, in the first slide, you mentioned yung total enrollment. But ano ba talaga yung exact figure ng bilang ng mga sadyante na hindi talaga nakakabalik for school year 2020? Uh, 
if, if you can uh, put put it up um yes uh eh, madam senator mr chair uh kaya po namin na uh, ipineg ito sa last uh, school year ay gusto nating ma-benchmark uh, base dun sa nakaraang taon pero uh, under normal uh, circumstances ay ito po ay nadadagdagan uh, if I recall correctly by about 2% uh, but uh, I, I hope our planning director is here uh, I, I just uh, gave uh, um, Madam Chair my uh, Madam Senator my recollection uh, na halimbawa ito pong last year's enrollment na ito uh, kung walang COVID ay tataas po yan ng inaasahan ng mga about uh, 2% uh, uh, more uh, so ang uh, ang nababawas po dito sa nakaraang uh, taon ay yung nag-graduate ng grade 12 pero may papasok naman na uh, bagong uh, batch ng uh, mga kindergarten uh, students so but uh, hindi naman po napakalaki yun. So ang sa tingin namin ay a good uh, indicator of uh, our level of uh, normal participation would be from last year's enrollment. At kung makikita po natin dito, uh, at this level ay uh, at the public sector were uh, 1 million less than last year. Uh, but from the pub private schools ay their enrollment is uh, almost uh, about 2.8 uh, million less than uh, last year. So kung susumahin po niyan ay uh, meron tayong, uh, ibig sabihin, uh, non-participation, uh, extraordinary non-participation on account of COVID as of today, uh, that is about uh, 4 million learners, uh, Madam Senator. Um, we have more or less 4 million out of school youth for next school year. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Madam uh, Senator. And uh, uh, so, uh, very truthfully, uh, pinag-usapan namin yan sa, uh, sa department uh, how uh, we will address that uh, expansion for this year of our non-participation and uh, a, uh, but uh, as of this time our main focus uh, uh, for now is really those that have enrolled uh, uh, for the opening uh, but we will uh, discuss in greater detail how we will address this uh, non-participation. Halimbawa, uh, uh, a, what interventions can be done uh, for this uh, uh, non-enrollees uh, to still be able to uh, uh, access uh, learning opportunities? Although, uh, uh, may mga usapin ho dyan, like uh, yung pag-advance nila or pag-promote uh, nila to the next uh, grade level will be issues and policy issues that we will have to uh, discuss within the department. Uh, but it is a, an extraordinary uh, year as far as our uh, participation rate is concerned, uh, Madam Senator. Um, Naplot niyo na ba to? Like, for example, NCR, ano mm -hmm. yung ilan dito yung hindi nakapag-enroll or ilan lang dito yung nakapag-enroll? Meron na ho ba kayong it's another type of mapping. Uh, yes, that is readily available. Yeah. Yeah. Madam Senator, that data is more readily available dun, dun sa internet coverage. Kasi po, uh, yung sa internet coverage na hinihingi nyo na mapping ay mas mahirap i-bigay uh, ang detalye. Uh, pero yun pong uh, enrollment uh, up to the local and even up to the school's level ay may datos po tayo niyan. So we can provide that. Uh, a more detailed uh, data of this uh, up to uh, division level siguro just uh, for clarity. But if uh, there's interest up to the school level, uh, kung may particular school, we can provide that data, Madam uh, Senator. Okay, Isaac, maybe you can just submit to the committee. And then, 
kanina ho, nabanggit nyo na yung, I think, first week or first two weeks will be devoted to orientation. Tama po ba? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, so, first week ko, uh, I, uh, syempre, uh, as I mentioned, merong mga nakapag-preliminary orientation na, uh, pero hindi po lahat pa. So, uh, as we distribute the learning resources, uh, come opening ay may mga familiarization pa at uh, maaring hindi ka agad uh, mag-umpisa immediately yung formal uh, class taking. Uh, at uh, si Secretary Briones also uh, made the directive na mahalagang mahalaga yung psychosocial uh, interventions at this time to prepare them. And also some of the health standards uh, that is uh, peculiar or particular to the present situation. In fact, uh, I'm sure that uh, even, uh, I mean, this this uh, orientation uh, should help also our teachers even uh, because hindi naman, eh, ibig sabihin, kahit dun po lang sa mga usapin na uh, uh, proper wearing of uh, masks, for example, how do we take care of ourselves in the home setting? Hindi naman porke nasa bahay ay eh, uh, uh, ligtas lahat dahil talagang lahat ng uh, kabahayan ngayon ay may lumalabas. So, uh, do, those, uh, we are preparing or we have prepared materials for that. At yun ang uh, malamang ay sa unang uh, linggo. Uh, ay, uh, kaya ko lang uh, Madam Center na banggit na malamang ay uh, binibigyan din namin ng uh, ng flexibility yung aming mga regional uh, directors kasi kung mayroon pong mga paaralan na maagang nakapagsagawa ng orientation even before 24, eh di baka mas maaga silang uh, magumpisa na kaagad ng formal classes uh, at the beginning. Pero, but uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, expectedly, hindi pa siguro naabot lahat. Uh, ang mas nakaabot talaga ay yung mga kung saan kami nag dry run and simulations. Uh, na nangyari. So yung mga skwelahan na yon ay advanced na, nakapag-orient na ng mga magulang, ng mga bata, na nakapagbigay na ng, for, ng uh, at least one week's worth of lessons. Uh, so medyo may familiarization na. But that does, it's not true for all of our schools, uh, Madam Senator. Um, so you said, meron din naman mga sujante na they can start by August 24 doing yung mga self learning modules nila. Yes, uh, yes Madam Senator. In fact, uh, uh, lalo lalo na yung may access uh, to the uh, to the DepEd Commons then as as I mentioned the uh, okay, first two weeks of the minimum uh, we're advanced uh, at any point in time yung gusto po natin uh, na laging may two weeks uh, worth of uh, learning resources in advance uh, yung mga bata. Uh, mahalaga ito para makita din ng uh, mga guru how to strategize for the week as well as the parents themselves and the learners also. Dam Center. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, siguro yung muna to give time to my other colleagues. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator, Bina uh, Senator Tolentino is recognized. You're on mute, Senator Tonatina. Yes, uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, salamat po, Senator Gachalian, uh, with the permission of my colleagues, Senators Binay and uh, Ho. Uh, I have some questions directed towards uh, DepEd and uh, ULAP. Is, is the ULAP representative there, uh, Governor uh, Dax Kua? Yes, uh, they, they, have a, they have a representative from ULAP. Yes. Uh, Ganito po eh. last last Monday, I I first I'd like to thank DepEd for pursuing some uh, measures that would re that would really uh, accommodate our present situation. But last Monday, I I happened to uh, browse an article quoting Secretary Briones, and this is not direct word, the direct words. We are doing everything in so far. Quote unquote, uh, this can be this can be uh, 
perhaps a paraphrase, quote unquote, we are doing everything to extend the limits in so far as the law is concerned. So ginagawa nila lahat ng DepEd yung pwedeng gawin sang ayon sa batas. But apparently, apparently Mr. Chairman, uh, Secretary Briones is referring to Republic Act 7797. Kaya pinipilit nila na August 24 kasi nakatingin sila doon sa old law, Republic Act 7797. And Mr. Chairman, I would like to remind the DepEd family that there is now a Republic Act 11480 na ipinasa ng Kongreso at pinirmahan ng ating uh, ni Pangulong Duterte noong July 17. And from my own personal research, the said law is effective July 20, 2020. Effective na po yun kasi na-publish na po yun sa official gazette. And I'd like to remind the, the DepEd uh, uh, officials listening, there is a provision in that law, uh, specifically section, section 2, and I quote verbatim, implementing rules and regulations within 30 days upon the effectivity of this act, the Department of Education, in consultation with relevant stakeholders, shall Shall, mandatory, issue the necessary rules and regulations for its effective implementation, unquote. So, ibig sabihin po dito, yung 30 days will expire August 19. Wala pa ho ako nababalitaan na nag-conduct ng consultation meeting ang Department of Education para palabas, balangkas, yung implementing rules and regulations ng Republic Act 11480 nakakapasa lang sa Senado sa Kongreso at effective na po ito po yung batas na pwedeng ipospone on a regional basis staggered nakita ko kanina yung mga datos 50% pa lang yung preparedness on a regional basis yung opening ng klase ang tanong ko po ganito kailan po gagawin ng DepEd itong uh, implementing rules and regulations eh magtatapos na po ito next week August 19, yung, yung period na binigay ng batas. At kung, kung wala pong pandemic ngayon, napakahalaga po nito kung August 19 sa DepEd, simula pa lang unong bata ako kasi ito po yung linggo ng wika na lagi pong uh, sinusunod sa, sa almang sulok ng Pilipinas. Linggo ng wika, Manuel Quezon Day. So, at tanungin ko po ang DepEd, kailan nyo ilalabas itong implementing role? Siguro kung ginawa nyo na ito, ay eh, maaaring hindi nagkamali si Secretary Briones o baka na-misquote lang siya ng dyaryo kasi ang tinutukoy pa niya ay yung old law. Kaya nagkakandara pa lahat kayo na makaabot ng August 24 kasi hindi kayo nakatingin doon sa bagong batas. Dahil hindi niyo pa ginagawa yung implementing rules. And I would like to get, if there is a governor present or a city mayor present, their, their corresponding reaction. Kasi uh, dapat tanungin din po yung mga local government units. Uh, yung po yung unang tanong ko. Para sa DepEd, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair. Yes, yes uh, you, uh, Kumali. Uh, Kumali, I can uh, hey. respond first. Uh, Good Good and then you can uh, give your response. Uh, tama po, uh, yung nabanggit uh, ni uh, Senator, in fact, uh, madami ay mga, ang alam ko, ay co-authors nitong uh, uh, batas na ito na nilagtaan ng Pangulo noong uh, July uh, 17 as mentioned by the uh, honorable senator at alam po batid po ni uh, kalihim uh, uh, Briones yan uh, hindi po yung dalawa pong batas na yan ay coexisting uh, yung nabanggit niya as amended by this law and uh, as mentioned uh, in the conditions as, as now where there has been declared a uh, national calamity or emergency ay ang Pangulo ay uh, may kapangyarihan na mag-set ng uh, school opening lampas dun sa itinakda noong uh, inamyandahan na batas na hanggang katapusan ng Agosto uh, sa uh, upon the recommendation of the uh, Secretary. Uh, amin pong uh, legal department at saka LLO ang uh, siyang uh, 
na may uh, naatasan na mag uh, conduct nung nabanggit niyo na consultations for the uh, uh, for the uh, development and promulgation of the implementing rules and regulations. Uh, pero ang amin pong position din sa Department of Education ay uh, ang elements nito ng batas na ito ay very straightforward and it can be, while waiting for the IRR, can be exercised uh, already by the Secretary and the uh, uh, President. At uh, sa isa naman pong aspeto... So, na yung... po, uh, Yusek Umali. Uh, nag-conduct na ba kayo ng consultation? Kasi itong, itong present virtually sa hearing ngayon ni Senator Gatchet yan, ito po lahat yung stakeholders. Uh, ito po, po lahat yung dami na natin na pag-usapan. Nag-conduct ba kayo ng hearing na sang-ayon sa tinatakda ng Republic Act 11480? Yes or no lang yun? Uh, uh, with the permission of the chair, Uh, yes, you, Sir Kamali. So, uh, or, uh, the, the answer is the way it's... Kasi, opo, yes. The way it was asked kung... Nag-hearing na ba kayo? Kasi hindi, uh, hindi na ipitahan din ang committee namin. Ni committee ni Senator Gatchel yan. The, the answer Kasi is... Kung, kung hindi pa kayo nagkukondakt ng hearing, ang ibig sabihin, hindi nyo tinutupad itong batas, nakatali kayo doon sa, sa inyong hinahabol ng August 24. Kaya tayo hirap na hirap dito kasi ipipetsa kayo tinakda. Samantalang yung batas ay nagbigay sa inyo ng palugit na pwedeng i-adjust yung, yung finish line, pwedeng gawing yung, yung halimbawa, uh, yung hindi pa low risk areas, yung mga areas na mahina ang connectivity, pwedeng sa October na, pwedeng sa November na. Yung po yung, yung, po yung uh, spirit of the law. Nabigyan po kayo ng, uh, ng karapatan na i-adjust yung opening as long as you will comply with the 220 days requirement. So, ang tanong ko ulit, nag-contact na ba kayo ng hearing? Ng consultation? Uh, the way it was asked, Mr. Chair, yung consultation, halimbawa po sa mga stakeholders na nandito po ngayon, wala pa po yun, pero yun. mahalagang so maitagdag po. Uh, ang deadline po, uh, Jose Kumali, ang deadline po na tinatadhana ng batas ay August 19. Dapat labas na yung ating implementing rules. Next week na po yun. Huwag po tayong mag-alala, Mr. Ling Chair. Linggo ng wika. Senator Hindi ba nahalita ng kopya yung committee ng inyong draft implementing rules and regulations? Opo, Senator Tol, Mr. Chair, huwag po mag-alala ang ating pong butihing Senator uh, Tol Tolentino po. Yung bahagi ng konsultasyon kung hindi po mangyayari po Uh, ngayong linggong ito uh, ay uh, sa susunod na linggo po namin gagawin. Senator, uh, Mr. Chair, meron na po kaming draft na nagawa. Meron po kaming proseso po kasing uh, uh, sinusunod pag gumagawa po ng IRR. So, kaagad-agad po inutos ng aming kalihim na balangkasin po itong IRR na ito. So, very quickly, we start with a working draft and then uh, led by our legal department ay nagkaroon po ng several uh, uh, in uh, within department meetings siguro nakakaapat o tatlong meeting na po ito hindi po yan bababa sa tatlong pagpupulong at yung produkto po dito ay mayroon po s'yempre muna kaming working draft na ipepresenta po doon sa aming kukonsultahin The way we yun na nga, yun na nga, yun na nga, Yusek, kumali ang hinihiling ko. Sana, hingan din natin ng inputs itong mga stakeholders na nakikinig na yun sa inyo. Itong mga bumubuo ng sa pribadong sektor, yung mga teachers association, yung mga magulang, na sa ganun, eh, meron din silang ma maibahagi sa, sa na inputs dito sa lalabas na implementing rules at kasama po yung mga local officials kasi po sila na naman ang bubunok nito. Paano kayo mag-open ng eskwelahan sabay-sabay ng uh, August 24 kung yung ibang mga lugar ay eh, sarado, naka-lockdown, walang kinikita yung mga magulang, walang nakakaroon, walang livelihood. Paano makakatulong sa kanilang mga anak yun? So, we have to consider all three factors. One, health. Number two, livelihood. Number three, yung interconnectivity. When you when you craft the implementing rules for Republic Act 11480. And if you're planning to do that next week, ayun eh, na po yung deadline, linggo ng wika. Uh, 
ironically, August, uh, August 19. So, Mr. Chair, kinakabahan po ako rito na baka hindi, hindi makakomply. Abisuhan na ngayon kaagad yung mga stakeholders na nandito. Makakaasa po kayo, Mr. Chair, Senator Tolentino, na lahat po ng mga stakeholders ay makukonsulta. May, meron lang po kami, natapos na po namin yung bahagi, katatawag ko po lamang po, pati po yung mga regional offices po namin, at meron na po kaming very good working draft to present to the stakeholders. Makakaasa po kayo, Mr. Chair, Senator Tolentino, the way we crafted the IRR of the K-12 law, we consulted everybody, the school feeding law, the Universal Kindergarten Act, the other uh, uh, education-related laws, the way DepEd is always doing this, Mr. Chair, Senator Tol, we will consult so, them. Sana po, uh, Jose Kumali, within this week, mabigyan nyo kami ng option of draft. Uh, gusto talaga namin makatulong sa inyo. Yung mga Opo. governors, gusto makatulong. Wala kaming uh, kopya. Ulitin ko, mandato ito ng bata sa inyo. At pwede kayo magkakaso rito pag hindi ginawa itong implementing rules. Nakalagay dito, shall within 30 days. And that 30 days will expire August 19. And today is now August 12. So you have seven days to go. Yes, Mr. Chair. At gusto ko lang pong idagdag, yung 15-day publication requirement, hindi po kasama yun dun sa 30 days. Uh, kaya we are still within the time period at uh, we assure this honorable you're, you're, committee... You're, uh, you're probably... Uh, I uh, misinform uh, you said Kumali ang nakalagay po sa section 4 ng batas effectivity this act shall take effect immediately after publication in the official gazette and it was published in the official can you compute that ilan yan No no it's not corrected Mr. Chair I don't want to uh, I have no intention to confuse our good senator wala po akong ganung big sabihin basta ang sinasabi ko lamang po uh, uh, yung uh, mangyayari po yan within the period siguro I'll just put it that way Uh, at, uh, in other words, uh, we, we, we don't uh, uh, mean na, na naipasok pati yung publication requirement within the 30-day period. We will have, may make this happen, Mr. Chair, Senator Tol, and we'll provide the good Senator a copy of so, the draft. So, lalabas yung said kumali, yung, 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 yung finish line mo ay September 3 na, tapos na yung, yung August 24. So, this is now uh, reached a very complicated Uh, situation involving all the legalities here. So, sana madaliin natin ito kasi matagal na naman ito na-publish. Apparently, nakalimutan nyo, nakaligtaan nyo uh, in your rush to, to meet the uh, August 24 deadline, which has been amended by Republic Act 11480. Yun lamang po, uh, Senator, uh, Mr. Chairman, ang, ang, ang naitanong ko at uh, sana po makahabol ang DepEd. Napakarami po nilang hinahabol ngayon Uh, pero ito pong requirement ng batas ay dapat i-comply po nila ito. Well said, Mr. Chair, and we will comply and we still have time. Uh, yun lang po yung sinasabi namin. Hindi pa po kami huli, Mr. Chair. Thank uh, you po. Will the good senator a copy of the draft uh, po? Thank you, Mr. I, Chair. Yuse Kumali, susugan ko lang yung sinabi ni Senator uh, Francis. Uh, talagang minadali itong uh, batas na ito precisely to give the pet the flexibility Uh, dahil nga very uncertain yung mga nangyayari ngayon para mabigyan kayo ng flexibility na magpospone ng class opening, uh, ito ay rinash ng Kongreso at ng Senado. At uh, uh, again, no, uh, we, we just want to remind the, the Department of Education na sumunod po doon sa mga nakasulat sa batas para ma-implement po kaagad. And pakisubmit na lang po sa amin, uh, Yusik Kumali, a timetable on where when do you when do you uh, plan to conduct the consultation as well as the publication para masundan po namin here in the committee opo maraming po salamat mr chair and we really appreciate the intervention of the good senator talentina salamat po mr chair thank you thank you uh, i want to call on senator lapid kung meron po mga katanungan Any question for Senator Lapid? Kung wala po... Uh, Senator, 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 one last point, uh, Senator Gatina. Yeah, yes, Senate, yes, go ahead, Senator Francis. Uh, sal salamat po sa reminder ng committee and, and reminding again the, the Deaf Department of Education that they have 168 hours. They have 168 module, hours to consult uh, with all the stakeholders. Yung, kung magkaroon na uh, implementing guidelines 
and to furnish this committee and to inform the nation that they have done the IRR. So you have 168 hours, Jose Kumali. All right. Uh, ibig sabihin, Yusek, wag na ho kayo matulog. Yun ang ibig sabihin ni uh, we will Senator comply, Francis. Po. We appreciate the intervention. Thank you po, Mr. Chair. We will comply. Opo. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes, Senator Nancy. Siguro idadagdag ko lang dun sa discussion. Can I, kay Yusek Umali, may window pa ho ba na magbago ang isip ng DepEd to move the school opening? I will, I will ask Mr. Chair, please, our Chief Nepo to, to reply on that all. Uh, uh, Madam, Madam Senator, Mr. Chair, uh, si Secretary uh, Briones po ay uh, nagbibigay ng, uh, ng updates uh, parati kay uh, Pangulo. At uh, hindi ko lang alam kung may schedule sila this week. Uh, it is a matter... Uh, for the uh, in that update uh, whether a recommendation would be uh, made by the secretary in the course of that uh, update uh, so maaari pong mangyari yun uh, this, uh, this week uh, and uh, a, a, in, in the end it will be uh, for the uh, president's uh, uh, decision based on uh, on hindi ko po mapangunahan ang aming kalihim kung ano ang kanyang uh, uh, tatalakayin kay Pangulo sa pagkikitang iyon. Nakapang, nakatatlo na po, pang-apat na. At ang aming pong legal position din dito ay uh, habang hinihintay natin itong, uh, uh, itong IRR ay uh, may aspeto itong batas na ito na complete in its terms uh, which is the uh, the authority of the president uh, to set a different uh, date upon the recommendation of the uh, of the secretary. Uh, at, at the same time, I uh, we agree uh, with the Senator uh, Tolentino as well as the Honorable Chair na uh, kailangang uh, uh, maipagpatibay yung uh, uh, implementing rules and regulation na ito uh, with due consultation to the stakeholders as provided by this uh, amendment uh, to the uh, school calendar law. So, hindi ko po ma ma masabi sa inyo, as I mentioned, I'm not in a, a position to speak for the secretary on this matter in relation to the uh, update or presentation that she may have uh, with the president, uh, and I, I'm not even e privy to whether a schedule is uh, a, is a, has been agreed. Yeah, but uh, you, but you like malaluan si secretary. Well, sa mga uh, uh, press release has always maintained that um, she wants to, ano what, to push through with the uh, August twenty four. Opening. So, parang din sa statement nyo, pwede bang magbago? Or, or at the moment, or at the moment, Secretary is still recommending to the President that we push through with the August 24 opening. Uh, I, 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 with the kind indulgence of Senator Nancy, no, uh, going with that question, uh, Yusek, Yusek uh, Nepo, uh, the August 24 opening was premised on uh, bubuti na yung sitwasyon natin. At uh, from ECQ, pupunta sa GCQ, at bubuti na yung sitwasyon nun natin. Pero meron kasing supervening event. Ito yung pagbalik natin sa MECQ. And uh, itong pagbalik natin sa MECQ, uh, in NCR, in Bulacan, Cavite, Laguna, uh, created a lot of uncertainty. I'll give you a very specific uncertainty. Yung mga teachers natin at principals ngayon, hindi nila alam kung itutuloy nila yung distribution ng self-learning modules house-to-house -house under MECQ. So ngayon, kahit printed na, uh, based on my survey and in information, walang nagdi-distribute. Dito sa amin sa Valenzuela, uh, hindi pinadistribute kasi nga takot ang ating mga guru at baka ma-infect sila. Ngayon, uh, magkakaroon ng decision 
whether and, and next ang question ko is itutuloy ba itong MECQ o babalik tayo sa GCQ at malalaman lang natin yung sagot na yan typically on the last day which is uh, August uh, 19 no uh, because that is the last day of uh, the two week MECQ ngayon kung August 19 hindi itutuloy ang MECQ ibababa tayo sa GCQ we have five days till August 24. Kaya ba i-distribute yung mga self-learning modules from August 19 to August 24 when the class opens? That's number one question. And then number two, assuming matuloy ang MECQ in these areas, uh, what will be the uh, uh, what will be the uh, uh, decision of the Department of Education? Because obviously. Under MECQ, uh, our teachers will be put at risk pag didistribute nila yung mga, mga material. He said not only our teachers, yung mga kabahayan natin, kasi gagalaw ngayon, eh, magdidistribute bahay-bahay nationwide. So, first question is, kaya ba from August 19 to August 24 magdistribute ng uh, self-learning modules? At pangalawa, assuming ma-extend itong MECQ, what will be the decision? Ah, uh, Uh, with the permission of uh, the Honorable Chair, uh, yes, as, ahead, an, as uh, to respond to uh, Madam Senator's uh, question, uh, uh, first is uh, dun po sa framework na binabanggit uh, by the Honorable Chair na uh, August 24 was set in anticipation of a better situation. Uh, hindi hindi po eksaktong ganun yung aming uh, pagtatasa ng uh, learning continuity plan. In fact, uh, ito pong learning continuity plan uh, takes in, uh, ibig sabihin, uh, under under uh, various quarantine conditions. Kaya nga po may pure uh, distance learning uh, modality dito. Dangan nga lamang at totoo po yung sinabi ninyo na uh, one of the distance learning modality to the extent that they will be using printed modules that will have to be retrieved physically, ay meron pa rin physical movement as, as uh, the chair mentioned. And uh, in conditions of MECQ, ay hindi lamang po yung aming mga kaguruan ang may limitasyon because we are, uh, ang amin pong uh, work arrangement dapat dyan ay skeleton force and not the Uh, ang inadapt namin beyond MECQ ay up to 50%. But in skeleton force ay mas mababa. But the households are also uh, prevented from uh, going to uh, the schools kung, uh, hin kung wala silang special permit to go out of their household. So uh, tama po yung uh, nabanggit nyo na yun. Pero just, just to Uh, clarify na hindi nakabatay yung learning continuity plan na uh, walang MECQ because it was precisely designed to uh, allow for learning continuity under various uh, circumstances. Uh, kaya din po uh, inibitahan natin yung ating dalawang regional directors uh, ang Region 4A uh, kung saan may uh, may coverage doon sa lalawigan ng uh, uh, Laguna, Cavite at Rizal uh, at saka ang NCR na pinakamalaking na uh, natamaan nito. Uh, yun pong covered ng uh, MECQ ay ang total enrollment ay a little over 4 uh, million or about 20% of our uh, total enrollment. So kung mamarapatin uh, by the Honorable Chair, uh, if we can... Uh, ask uh, uh, Regional Director Willie Cabral and reg or Regional Director Malcolm Garma on the adjustments that they will make in the context of the MECQ uh, constraints in relation to the August 24, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh -oh. my, my point, uh, Yusek, no? uh, the reason why we move to MECQ is because the situation is worsening. No? And we need to arrest that situation. And ang pinaka-basic component ng uh, learning continuity plan is yung self-learning module na i-deliver bahay-bahay o pipikapin sa school. Pero paano natin gagawin yun if the situation is worsening? Yun ang punto ko eh. 
and we don't have any any uh, way of predicting after August 19 kung mag improve o hindi mag improve ang situation. And there's also a big chance na baka ma-extend ang MECQ, no? Because I can I, I know for a fact that some doctors are are requesting ma, ma extend in MECQ at least. So my point of the matter is is how can we mobilize yung teachers who natin if the situation is worsening? No. And this goes to the point ni Senator uh, Francis na kaya ho inenact itong uh, bagong batas natin itong RA 11480 is para kung nagworsen ang situation at lumala talaga yung sitwasyon meron tayong ganitong batas na pwedeng magbigay ng flexibility. Uh, my recommendation is kung ang areas ay ma-extend ng MECQ, we should just postpone school opening on those areas because hindi natin pwedeng palakarin ni mga guru natin, palabasin ni mga magulang natin sa isang kondisyon na, nag, na lumalala. Kaya nga ho tayo nag-MECQ dahil lumalala ho yung sitwasyon. At sabihin natin, sige, labas kayo at di-deliver ho natin yung mga, yung mga materials natin. I yung po talagang magkakaroon tayo ng malaking problema sa ating mga guru at sa ating mga lugar. So ang recommendation ko, kung ang MECQ po ay ma-extend, we trigger itong bagong batas, itong RA11480, para po ipospon yung class opening doon lang po sa lugar because that condition is worsening. Talaga hindi, hindi yung nag-improve at hindi natin naman, hindi naman kasalanan ho ng DepEd na hindi ho nag-improve in situation. Talagang ganun po yung nangyari. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may be allowed to just a uh, quick uh, remark. Uh, una, uh, sa tingin ko po ay hindi pipilitin uh, sa mga lugar na ito na palabasin yung mga manggulang natin at mga guro para mag-distribute ng uh, learning resources uh, physically. Uh, dahil unang-una ay may pagbabawal nga po. Uh, una, skeleton force lang ang pwedeng lumabas. So hindi natin na uh, maaaring lumabas yung, yung mga guro uh, to in, interact with the... Uh, uh, even with barangays and so on. At gayon din, uh, ang mga magulang o mga kabahayan natin ay may limitasyon din ng kanilang uh, movement. Kaya kaya po, uh, baka maaari nating pakinggan si uh, si uh, RD uh, Willie Cabral natin ng Region 4A uh, kung paano ang adjustments uh, na uh, kanilang napag-usapan uh, uh, to to meet such a physical limitation uh, na kinikilala po natin. Ganun din ang NCR. Um, okay. Sige po, before I recognize si, uh, uh, si uh, Director Cabral, uh, Senator Nancy, any follow-up uh, any follow-up questions? Uh, Sir, pasagutin muna natin siguro. To tell it's to Sige po. Yeah, we'll, we'll recognize. Mr. Yes. Uh, yeah, you said you mali. Opo, opo. Ipagpaumanin po ninyo, Mr. Chair, pero maganda mailagay po on record, Mr. Chair. Uh, my bad. Uh, ang legal department po namin ay nagkaroon na po ng consultation last August 10 and we will provide our good uh, uh, this honorable committee and our Senator Tolentino a, a copy of the after it, the suggestions and inputs coming from Various federation PTAs from Cocopea, private school associations, uh, student organizations, uh, na nakonsulta na po DepEd supervisors, organization of our superintendents, of our school principals. Pero kukonsultahin po muli namin, Mr. Chair, I'm talking about the, the IRR on the school calendar law, yung ating pong uh, grupo ng mga pamahalaang lokal at pati po ang uh, Senado at ang uh, mababang kapulungan po ng ating Kongreso. So I, I just would like to make it uh, very clear that we have already done that uh, consultation and uh, we are in the process of finalizing the, 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 the IRR uh, in time for the period uh, uh, mentioned by our good Senator Tolentino. Pero bago po mangyari yun, i-engage po namin po ang, uh, ang, ang mga Senador po uh, at ang... Uh, ang various leagues. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Yusuf Mali. We recognize Director uh, Cabral. 
hindi ito baho siya. Yes, uh, Willie. Go ahead. Go ahead, Willie. Naka-mute ka. Naka... Yan, naka-unmute ka na. But we cannot hear you, Willie. Walang, wa, hindi ka namin marinig. Uh, I think it's your uh, earpiece. Hindi ka namin marinig, pero naka-unmute ka na. Ah, wala pa rin. Pwede yung director muna from NCR? Oh, si Willie is the director from NCR? From Region 4A. Region 4A. Sige po. Can we recognize... Uh... Uh, Mr. Chair? Who is the... Uh, yes. This is R.D. Malcolm Garma of uh, Deped NCR, Mr. Chair. Oh, sige po. Uh, yes, yes Director Garma. Garma. Go ahead. Yeah, good morning po, Mr. Chair, and to all the senators in attendance. Uh -oh. Yeah, uh, for NCR, uh, Mr. Chair, we are actually preparing uh, in the event that uh, hopefully NCR will be under GCQ by August 19. So when we did the simulations in NCR, uh, uh, that was during the time that uh, NCR was under GCQ, so nakapagpalabas naman po kami ng mga ilang guro who conducted the simulation. But uh, now that we are under MECQ, Mr. Chair, talagang uh, admittedly, medyo hirap po yung mobility namin because not only that we are only observing the skeleton workforce in our offices and schools, but uh, of course we know that under MECQ, there is an absence of public transport. So... Though we have our skeleton workforces now in the offices and school, uh, we still have to provide uh, transportation or shuttle services for those who will report physically to work. So tama po yung sinabi niyo, Mr. Chair. Uh, the modules may be delivered or already ready in the respective divisions in NCR, but the, ne the next problem will be the distribution. So in the event, uh, Mr. Chair, that NCR will maintain to be under MECQ of August 19, uh, we are now coordinating with the respective LGUs uh, for possibility of helping the schools to deliver the modules uh, to the respective households or even to the community or through the barangay uh, by with the use of uh, non-teaching personnel that we have in our in our uh, communities or in our schools. So sa ngayon po, Mr. Chair, uh, in the event na talagang magtuloy-tuloy po yung MECQ, uh, we will admit that in NCR may hirapan po kaming gumalaw. But uh, we are trying and exploring everything uh, in, uh, in, in with the help of our respective LGUs na ma-deliver po namin kahit po yung first hanggang two second week of our uh, modules. And we are also employing uh, certain activities. We call this some bridging program activities na kung saan uh, hindi naman module lang din yung gagamitin natin, but we will also be using some other forms or other uh, platforms like the use of uh, Facebook uh, and other platforms available, uh, but the, with the use of smartphones and, uh, and, and tablets or gadgets that are available uh, for use ng ating mga guro at mga learners. So, uh, again, Mr. Chair, we are preparing uh, for the opening of August 24 classes, but in the assumption also that uh, NCR will be under GCQ after August 19. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
extend ang MECQ, then we trigger the new law, no? itong RA11480, as mentioned by Senator Tolentino. Dahil nga, ang MECQ, ang ibig sabihin niyan, lumalala yung sitwasyon sa ating lugar at uh, lumalala yung sitwasyon sa iba't ibang uh, barangay natin. I know for a fact, some, some of the LGUs may mga nakalockdown na sitio, nakalockdown na barangay, nakalockdown na community. So, in other words, uh, hindi natin pwedeng pilitin ni mga guru natin, even non-teaching personnel, na mag-distribute sa isang lugar na lumalala. That is my recommendation because right now, uh, the situation is uh, quite uncertain. No? Hindi natin pwedeng nag improve hindi rin natin pwedeng sabihin lumalala, parang hindi rin mahirap sabihin. And that's why I'm recommending to postpone school opening in case MECQ will be continued in this area, namely NCR, Bulacan, Cavite, Laguna, and Rizal. No, dahil uh, itong mga lugar, hindi naman, uh, again, no, hindi nag-i-improve at uh, napakahirap sabihin kung ano ang mangyayari. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yes. Yes. baka si... RD Willie, uh, just so we have uh, a sense also of their adjustments. But uh, on our part, I, uh, your uh, remarks and recommendations uh, we will uh, convey uh, to the Secretary, uh, but I would like to seek uh, a, your understanding that uh, we are not in a position to speak for the Secretary. I think the uh, on this matter, uh, I think uh, that uh, under that law, it's a recommendation by the Secretary to the President. And my understanding also is that uh, uh, there is a regular uh, presentation, update presentation by the Secretary to the President. And yeah. such might happen, uh, but I am not privy to any set schedule uh, between yeah. the Secretary and the President right now, uh, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. Chair? Yes, you said, uh, uh, sec Senator Binay. Pwede kay Director Garma lang for NCR. Anong, Director Garma? Okay, Director, Gar Director Garma. Ano mo ba more or less ang magiging mix for NCR? For NCR, mas marami tayong mga LGUs na financially capable or may mga estudyante tayo na mas may access to tablets, to smartphones, or even a uh, laptop. So for NCR, ano ba nakikita niyo mix? Kasi dun sa previous hearings, lagi sinasabi ni Secretary Briones na it's up to the regional, it's up to the director to, to decide kung anong mix yung gagawin nila dun sa lugar nila. Yes, uh, mad uh, Madam Senator, magandang umaga po. Uh, for NCR, you are right that there is a mix we call this as modified blended learning. Uh, we use the printed modules as a default tool uh, for our learning delivery. However, marami po tayo mga divisions or cities in NCR that will employ uh, the use of digital or online platform uh, with the use of gadgets uh, or tablets that uh, will be distributed as committed by the local government units. Um, kaya lang po, Madam Senator, uh, yung po mga commitment ng ating mga LGUs uh, for the distribution of gadgets may be hampered a bit because of some procurement issues. Uh, again, as uh, affected by the MECQ, uh, baka there will be some delays of the use of tablets or uh, the delivery of tablets or gadgets in, in some parts of the metropolis. Uh, this is why, uh, Madam Senator, uh, despite of this commitment of our local government units, uh, we still uh, ask our divisions to prepare uh, printed modules uh, just to serve as the fallback or para po kung hindi man ho umabot yung ating mga gadgets for the first months or first uh, first month of the opening of classes, ay meron pa rin ho magagamit ang mga bata. But uh, definitely for NCR, it will be probably around uh, a 50-50 or 4060 mix of printed modules and the use of uh, digital or online platform. Uh, however, Madam, Madam Senator, uh, 
for NCR, we are just looking at the use of printed modules, probably up to the first, second, first or second grading period, because we realize that the use of printed modules is really very expensive. It's not cost effective and at meron po itong environment cost no dahil po papel ang gagamitin. So sa ngayon pa lang po naghahanap na ho kami ng pamamaraan para ho unti-unti ay uh, mapalitan na namin yung aming uh, ginagamit na platform for the blended learning modality. So sana po ay uh, majority of our communities and cities and divisions will be now using the digital platform and uh, but hopefully uh, alongside with this uh, plan will be the uh, will be the improvement of uh, infrastructure uh, like for example in terms of connectivity and more 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 gadgets or more more hardwares can be committed no by our uh, local government units so sa halip na po dun gumagasto sa printing baka po ito na yung pwede nating uh, mag-invest tayo dun sa mga hardwares na ito so yun po ang sitwasyon na madam senator sa NCR Yes, um, we recognize Director Cabral. Uh, Director Cabral. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Willie, go ahead. Yeah. Sige. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, kabi po dito sa Region 4A, we have three provinces uh, declared under MACQ and two provinces, Batangas and Quezon, under GCQ. But uh, we do understand that the number of cases uh, are increasing, uh, even in those uh, covered by GCQ. But uh, there are also uh, other measures that are implemented in, in those GCQ areas. So uh, we look at the possibility if there will be uh, the lifting of MACQ and shifting to GCQ by August 19, we will use the window from uh, August 19 to a week, uh, August 24 in the first week, because uh, the first uh, week of the uh, classes, uh, the opening will be more on uh, psychosocial uh, 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 assessment and of course uh, preparation of our learners we will use that as our uh, window for the distribution majority of our uh, workers now in the department are uh, in work from home arrangement now what are the strategies that uh, we look into uh, one uh, we do the neighborhood uh, organization of classes and even the teaching assignment and loading of teachers so that they are contained within the uh, community where the school uh, is located. We also, for the distribution, retrieval and uh, 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 delivery of our SLMs, uh, we look forward to outsourcing of the manpower for the distribution of SLMs uh, within the within the area and use that uh, uh, other distributor, and uh, we will allocate some uh, amount uh, for uh, from the MO, MOE for these expenses. Uh, part of which also is on the observance of protocols on end-to-end -end handling of, of SLMs such that uh, we will secure permit or pass from the LGU for an embedded movement, whether these are volunteers or, or uh, on job orders or those working around uh, uh, for the distribution, we will implement the safety measures uh, and other health protocols. And of course, we ensure that uh, uh, these, these uh, SLMs are not damaged due to weather or improper handling. Uh, we do understand that there is an increasing uh, number of active cases, but these are also, when you look at the uh, levels of uh, communities within municipalities and municipalities uh, within the uh, provinces, uh, we can also uh, see that there are, of course, uh, the numbers uh, get smaller. So we first identify high-risk areas 
within the locality and uh, we will ensure a one-time delivery given that uh, window. And while we're saying that uh, there is no uh, the deferment of opening of classes on August 24, we will treat this as a sort of uh, uh, suspension, similar as what we do before pre-COVID pre uh, uh, period natin, that uh, during opening of classes, when we are hit by typhoon, the classes opens in, in June, say, for example, but we, uh, because of uh, disasters, natural calamities, uh, in some areas, these are suspended, and therefore we consider that, and then we will make adjustment uh, somehow along the way, uh, given the prescribed period. But uh, that is in the light of the situation that there has been no declaration from the president that it will it it uh, it will be moved to a later date uh, for that. Just the same. What I'm saying is we have. Uh, uh, we have done this preparation should uh, August 24 uh, is not uh, no, is, uh, not uh, deferred or opening of classes is not deferred, but uh, we are ready given all of those uh, uh, measures and action steps that our superintendents uh, are willing and planning to implement uh, at the lowest level from the division to the school. Thank you very much, Paul. But really, what do you recommend if the ECQ will uh, continue? Well, Are you in, on the, the ground there? Eh? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator, uh, if, if, uh, if we will be given, say for example, uh, uh, if MECQ will be continued, and I agree that uh, nobody can tell uh, what will really happen after August 18. But uh, if, you, uh, if the situation is uh, uh, worse by that time, uh, it still it will be extended. Obviously, the situation is not improving. Or the situation is still the same and might be getting worse. That's why it's MECQ. So the, the recommendation is uh, in those areas that uh, MECQ will be continued, then ipospone na lang muna natin yung school opening. That is what the spirit of the law is, or the new law is, itong uh, RA 11480, is to anticipate uh, situations like this. Yun lang naman po yung sinasabi natin. And kay Yusek Malaluan, if I recommend also to talk to, uh, when you talk to the good secretary, to already uh, seek guidance from the president uh, a few days earlier, maybe two days earlier, maybe three days earlier, para makaplan po on the ground. No? Because uh, kung magde-decide ho tayo last day, uh, napakahirap po gumalaw kasi kung magde-decide ho na baba either downgrade sa GCQ, uh, from August uh, 19 to 24, we're talking about only five days for the, the divisions to move. No, So uh, ang recommendation ko rin is to talk to the president early on so to seek guidance para alam ng mga divisions ko anong gag gagawin. Chair? Uh, Mr. Chair, yes. may I respond just quickly? Yeah, yes. You uh, that, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, ang alam ko ay kaya hindi lamang natuloy yung pag-uusap na ni Secretary Briones at ng Pangulo ay uh, nasa Davao uh, si Pangulo nitong nakaraang linggo at hindi kasama si Secretary dun sa mga uh, kalihim na nagtungo sa uh, Davao for a meeting with the President. Uh, but uh, as far as I know, uh, uh, as I mentioned, I, uh, even in the last meeting, I... Uh, nabanggit uh, that was televised, the televised portion ay nabanggit na magkakaroon pa sila ng isang uh, pagpupulong uh, ng Pangulo. And I am sure uh, that the Secretary is uh, well aware of uh, the law uh, and I am I'm, I'm just at, not at liberty unfortunately to uh, I mean in the context of the deliberative process between the Secretary and the President, I would not like to preempt the President, the Secretary, I mean, uh, for that meeting uh, with apologies to the 
committee, uh, Mr. Chair. Senator Binay, do you recognize? Chair, um, can we just get inputs from the private schools? Dun sa pinag-uusin yung how ready. Well, how ready yung government Because I think may mga public private schools sa tayo na nag-uumpisa na atin. Commute. With that question, I would like to uh, recognize uh, Senate, uh, Attorney Erap to um, uh, give us a uh, update on the activities of the private school and uh, also the situation of the private school. No? Taking note that uh, on the presentation of uh, Yusik Malaluan, that only 30% of the intended enrollees enrolled in the private school. So just give us a, a uh, update on the situation of the private schools. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Senator uh, Binay and Senator <coughs> Gachalian. Um, uh, our education, Philippine education system is composed of two sectors, the public and the private. So I hope when we say learning continues, we also include the students in the private sector. And it is unfortunate that based on the data presented, 95% of the enrollment in the public school system uh, so far no, has been uh, recorded, but only 30% of the enrollment in the private schools. And actually, yung pong 95% sa public schools, hindi entirely accurate dahil po dun sa uh, 400,000 na lumipat na from the private to the public. No, so kung ito ay around 10% po yan ng 4 million of the total students. So if we add that, edi dapat sana nag-increase na yung enrollment sa public schools. No? So it's unfortunate. Mukhang hindi na po tataas yung ating uh, enrollment uh, data sa private schools. Um, nung mga una pong hearings po natin, ang sabi ko worst case is 50%. Pero mukhang ngayon, mukhang malabo pa namin maabot yung 50%. Now, senators um, and the committee, uh, it gives us um, uh, different, scenario, different scenarios po of this data. Um, sa sector po namin, meron kami mga small private schools at meron din naman po na malalaking uh, private basic education schools kasi kasama po yung college and other programs. Now, ang effect po nito ng low enrollment is this. Marami po kaming mga uh, private schools who are ready, well-equipped, leto po sa technology yan dahil even before the pandemic, meron na po silang online learning. But unfortunately, because of the lack or very low enrollment, all of these technologies will be underutilized. Not, um, of course, mentioning yung ating well-trained faculty to handle this. So it is unfortunate na mga faculty or teachers with MA degrees well-trained on these different modalities will be underutilized simply because of lack of enrollment. And then uh, that's why we are actually looking at, uh, uh, we're trying to explore po, Senator, on how these um, resources in the private schools Will also be would also be used or utilized uh, to to improve po yung ating enrollment and uh, to accommodate yung mga hindi po makapag-enroll uh, this coming school year and also addressing the different modalities. Uh, gusto po sana namin itanong, like for example, saan po ba yung mga regions in the public schools ang gagamit ng online? Because I heard in uh, some uh, forums po na yung NCR, for example, will not be using uh, online agad, they will still explore whether it is possible. So ang uh, gusto po namin sana sabihin, in complementarity, baka naman po dun sa mga areas na hindi po kaya ng DepEd na gawing online, i-contract out po sa mga private schools. Because as already mentioned in the dis previous discussion, I think when we talk about health protocols, mas uh, preferred pa rin yung online. Kasi yung, uh, yung modular, hindi naman po yan absolutely ano, eh, zero contact or mobility. Kanina po nabanggit yung mga teachers na mag door-to-door, uh, -door, -door, house-to-house. At pati po yung mga students, I'm sure, in picking up uh, the materials, trying to print, etc. will also involve some physical contact. Yung mga ibang areas po, pinag-uusapan din how to disinfect the materials being passed around. So ang uh, gusto lang po sana namin, if possible, baka po pwedeng magkaroon po ng a sort of like a voucher, limited uh, per school year muna, kasi marami po talaga. That composed readiness component. Uh, 
Can you uh, flash that? Yeah. Mr. Chair, while that is being flashed, uh, may I just uh, be, if I may seek permission, just to yes, have a re remark on uh, uh, precisely the uh, uh, enrollment uh, is a factor for while they are ready to deliver, but uh, the enrollment in the private school has been affected for a number of reasons uh, on the part of the their enrollees. And uh, I think it is that uh, aspect uh, that the public sector is trying to catch with respect to the learning delivery that is not purely online. Because uh, even in Metro Manila, uh, that's the result of uh, the uh, survey form that we had, that uh, even in the most urbanized areas, if we take into consideration the uh, condition of the households and the learners, ay kung pure online ay hindi sila makakaparticipate uh, in such delivery and that's why uh, the modular unfortunately will also still uh, entail uh, physical uh, but uh, but not with the learners themselves and in a less uh, a contact intensity uh, manner we have to make that adoption uh, because otherwise, if we will go pure online, ay hindi magiging accessible po yung ating uh, learning delivery modalities. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, this is the nine yeah. uh, areas. Yeah. Uh, just to ano rin, pursue that uh, thought, uh, Yusek, uh, kay Attorney Era, in the Bayanihan 2, as approved by uh, the Senate, no? uh, meron 17 billion for unemployment or involuntary separation assistance for displaced workers or employees for private, basic, and higher education institutions and part-time faculty in state universities and colleges. So uh, this is uh, a, um, a uh, insertion or a, um, a provision that the Senate uh, approved. Uh, we recognize the displacement and also the unemployment uh, in the private education sector. So there are big funds doon that, uh, ano, that uh, we can tap. And uh, uh, we uh, ask the, the, the uh, guidance of the private schools to take a look at that provision para pag ginawa yung IRR, ay eh, makapture ka agad yung mga private schools doon. Yes, uh, thank you po, Senator. Uh, yeah, we, we are aware of that. Meron po doon expansion ng mga subsidies under gas pay. Yeah and also the DS for tertiary ed. But uh, yun po ang, uh, we just would like to focus since we're, we're talking about the capabilities in the delivery of the program. Uh, yeah, yun po sinabi ni Yusek Nepo, totoo po yun, yung uh, enrollment really, yung uh, low enrollment is really based on the financial capabilities of the parents. Uh, pero I think kasi ang uh, focus ko po is kanina, epic. DepEd's own limitations in the delivery of program. Kasi majority po, I think, just focusing on the capabilities lang po ng DepEd, not, not on the capabilities of the students. It is uh, parang leaning towards modular and not really online. Parang hindi po masyadong nababanggit. Ay, gusto ko lang pong i-present na sa private sector naman po, if we're talking about online, reading ready po doon. No? Kasi even before the pandemic, may mga learning platforms na it's really be, it's it's already being implemented. So, uh, nakakapaghinayang lang po kung hindi po ito talaga ma-maximize ng gamit. Uh, kung uh, we're just volunteering also, if there's yeah. a government uh, scheme where the students may be allowed to experience that uh, level or a level of education experience, we're opening also. Yeah. And also to help them, help our schools also cope with the pandemic. Yeah. Hello. Attorney Era, paki-submit sa amin those underutilized schools, no? Uh, where they are and the specific schools. Uh, that is a very good idea na gamitin natin in underutilization ng mga schools. Nandiyan na eh. No? And uh, uh, in the Bayanian law na mention na, na mention ko kanina, may fund demand. So we can probably channel some of those uh, funds uh, into a voucher system para magamit natin yung underutilization ng school. So uh, will help you bridge with the bed para magamit natin. Ang, 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 ang idea lang naman namin, magamit yun eh. No? Uh, kung nandyan na sila, then gamitin na natin. Yes po, Mr. Chair. Uh, Chair, gusto uh, po pong i-manifest po yung tungkol sa uh, yung sa IRR ng RA11480. Just want to manifest na. Last August 10, nagkaroon po ng consultation. And I was there. Okay. Uh, alright, alright. I think si Yusuf Kumali was not uh, updated on that. No? Yes, Senator Nancy. 
Like, kasi parang based in the statement ni Director Garma, parang even ang NCR is not ready for an online modality eh. Kasi parang dun sa nabanggit niya, mukhang printed yung gagamitin at least for the first semester. Pwede pang malaman kay, I don't know, kung kay Yusek Nepo, nagkaroon na ba tayo ng ano, pilot for online? Siguro, uh, just, or, just to share, Mr. Chair, kasi yung, like the other day, nagkaroon kami ng orientation para dun sa skwelahan ng mga anak ko, kung saan tinuro na nung, nung school, as a parent, ano yung responsibility mo. Uh, in fact, yung, yung gagamitin namin platform, which is yung Google Classroom, Meron dong ano eh na yung parent pwede maglalog. Meron siyang another um ano ba tawag doon? I'm not a techie person. Basta may app na kung saan as a parent mo-monitor mo yung 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 ginagawang trabaho ng mga anak mo kasi I think yung kunya rin may may mga um submission sila. Pwede i-upload dong school dun sa app na yon. I wonder kung yung DepEd may na set up na ba kayong ganito? Uh, with the permission of the chair, uh, eh, yes, meron po kaming kasama ng mga simulations ng ano, uh, ng uh, online. Ang uh, siguro ang kaibahan lamang dun sa uh, private schools ay meron silang setup na pure online at uh, dito po sa uh, Department of Education, it will still be a blending of. Uh, those various modalities. But meron naman pong uh, mga simulation kami and uh, actually I think uh, among those that would have simulated are uh, NCR and other, I've seen the simulations in other uh, areas, uh, uh, Madam Senator. Uh, but uh, ang hindi ko kayo masagot ay kung meron kaming set up na talagang 100% uh, online modality. Uh, but it it is a a a, a blending uh, with uh, itong ang modules. But and as mentioned by uh, R.D. Garma, uh, it will take them some time. Uh, kasi hindi naman po lang dun sa capacity namin to deliver. But kung may gadget, kagaya nung isang sinabi ni R.D., ay uh, may constraint din sila na lahat ba ng mga estudyante ay... Uh, may gadget sa bahay, may connectivity sa bahay, national institution dun sa aming joint TVL program nga na isang component din ng, uh, ng, ng GASPE. So kung may ganun pong uh, window o pagkakataon uh, where we can pull together uh, students that are ready for online, uh, pure online classes dahil may connectivity sila, may gadget sila, at may uh, kayang paaralan na mag-offer nun, then I think we can structure that uh, if uh, the resources uh, and the uh, uh, accounting uh, procedures will allow uh, uh, Madam Senator and uh, Mr. Chair. So, Yusek Nepo, parang lumalabas for this, well, at least for this first semester, wala talagang, um, kasi sa private school may kind of face-to-face -face scenario eh, through that online platform na kung saan uh, si teacher makikita mo dun sa screen, tapos pinapaliwanag niya yung konsepto, tapos si estudyante, yung mga estudyante, meron silang mekanismo din na kung saan pwede silang sumagot. At di ba may ganong interaction? So sa public school, parang walang ganong interaction na, na mangyayari. Ah, uh uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Senator, mayroon po pero hindi uh, hindi exclusively that form kasi nga po sa aming uh, survey form hindi lang po uh, sa aspeto ng may kakayahan ba kaming mag-provide noon pero may kakayahan ba yung household na mag-access at sa isang klase po ay but laging then, may... po, Yes. Uh, parang that's the only available form because yung a face to face is not possible so paano magkakaroon yeah. ng action si teacher dun sa estudyante para ipaliwanag yung mga konsepto kung uh, ganung uh, kagaya po nung uh, pinakitang simulation halimbawa sa Navotas ay minsan kasi ay walang capacity yung household for a uh, 
uh, video conferencing uh, na mas malaki ang bandwidth connected dapat uh, for a certain period of time pero meron naman po silang communication like messenger uh, so mas limited uh, form of interaction because of the limitation of the uh, of of the capacity of the learners kaya po nabanggit din ni uh, director Malcolm yung uh, Halimbawa, kung madelay yung uh, pag-make available ng gadgets. Kasi yung pong sinasabi nyo, maaring mangyari yon Pero hindi po lahat ng, uh, ng kumbaga, isang klase o isang section uh, of 27 uh, to 30 learners or to 40 can participate in that because the limitation can be on the part of the student and the household itself. Uh, uh, Ibig sabihin, limited uh, communication platforms lang po ang meron sila dahil sa financial resource nila or gadget limitation. So, ang nakita ko po ay, alimbawa, yung iba ay talagang uh, texting. Uh, yung calls na, uh, yung only calls ay pwede, pero hindi, wala silang capacity to have a, an interactive uh, a platform like we are doing now na makalag in sila into a class like this. Uh, uh, so yun po yung limitation. In fact, I think that is also the limitation why some of the private schools, even if they are ready to offer, eh, because of the limitations of the households, hindi naman sila maka-enroll uh, dahil yung ino-offer is exclusively uh, online. At hindi po namin kayang isubsidize yun lahat uh, at the household uh, level yung ganong capacity of the of the households. Kaya we appreciate, for example, yung ating mga uh, LGUs in Metro Manila that have committed, for example, to provide tablets. Uh, so that allows us the opportunity to have such a, a gadget na isang buong klase ay may, may tablet at ang problema na lang ay yung connectivity. So kung kami po ay magkaroon ng learning management system which is being developed, for example, by uh, our ICTS na zero rated, so may gadget na sila at may access sila to connectivity na hindi sila nag incur ng data charges, then that may be feasible as you are uh, uh, saying now, uh, Madam Chair, na uh, may talagang regular yung online uh, uh, delivery modality uh, noong, noong klase na yon. Uh, I have to ask si na RD Malcolm kung meron sila na ganun at uh, mga klase na uh, kasi alam nila po yung uh, contextualization nila kung may mga klase sila uh, in Metro Manila that have been able to sabi nila kanina 50-50 uh, kung meron ba doon na uh, uh, pure online uh, na delivery modality. It's usually, Madam uh, Senator, the limitation of the learner and the households kasi hindi lahat ng households ay have a capacity to uh, participate in such a modality uh, based on our learner enrollment survey uh, that we have. So may may iwan po kung yun ang aming ipapatupad. May mga estudyante na hindi makaka-participate. So, uh, that is why uh, probably it can be done with a certain uh, members of the class. Eh, dun sa hindi kaya mag-participate, talagang mag, uh, modular pa rin po sila. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's go back to that slide in readiness component. Uh, I just want to... There are nine blocks ito. There are nine blocks of the readiness component, uh, USEC. Uh, these are the blocks that we need to fulfill you know, in order to be ready by August 24. Uh, USEC, uh, at sa tingin ko may kulang tayo isa dito eh. Uh, mm -hmm. Ang kulang dito ay yung teacher and non-teaching staff welfare. You know? mm -hmm. Um in this presentation, uh, wala akong nakitang uh, that anything that deals with teaching and non-teaching staff's welfare. And in your 
uh, press con on Monday, and let me just quote, no, uh, there was a question na binato kay uh, Yusek uh, and Sevilla, uh, and, and let me just uh, read the quote. Ang tanong niya, uh, in cases where teachers get COVID-19, who will pay for the testing? Ang sagot ni Yusek, uh, Sevilla, the 2020 budget does not have allocation for testing and hospitalization, but there's collaboration with the Department of Health and LGUs to shoulder the cost of testing and hospitalization. And then she goes, DepEd has a pool of contributions from its employees to help teachers, staff, and personnel who get infected with COVID. From what I gathered here, Yusek, is there's uncertainty in terms of how do we test teachers and how do we address if uh, address their needs if they get infected. Um, ang punto ko dito, Yusek, is itong SLM natin, we will need the cooperation and the support of all 800,000 teachers. Sama na natin in non-teaching about 900,000 teacher, uh, 900,000 teaching and non-teaching personnel. And para maging effective itong uh, self-learning module, itong distance learning, we need to make sure that our teachers and non-teaching personnel will give their full cooperation and their full enthusiasm in terms of uh, executing this distance learning. Pero paano natin aasahan yung kanilang full cooperation kung takot sila? Kung alam nila na wala silang pupuntahan kung sila ay nag-test pas kung sila ay naging positive, kung sila ay may symptoms, kung sila ay lumala yung sakit nila, uh, paano natin mahihikayat sila na uh, tumulong i-operationalize itong distance learning natin kung alam nila na wala silang pupuntahan? And this is my concern because the teachers is an essential part of the success of this uh, learning continuity plan. Without their confidence, no, all of this will fail. And uh, kaya ako ay nababahala, to be honest, uh, Yusek, because uh, in your readiness, uh, we failed to look at the plight of our teachers and our non-teaching staff. Uh, and that uh, is consistent with the answer during the press con. In fact, natanong ka nga kung ilan yung nag-COVID positive, uh, but you didn't give an answer at that time, no? Despite there is a task force that monitors all of this. So my point is, um, we need to make sure that the welfare of our teachers and not teaching staff is well taken care of. Uh, kung hindi man sa inyong sa budget, may mga ibang mekanismo naman. For example, PhilHealth. No, lahat naman tayo bilang government employee, may PhilHealth to tayo. Uh, meron din tayong GSIS no, na pwede tayong mag-take up ng loan or mag-take up ng uh, whatever grant. Uh, but of course, the department needs to make sure that this is operationalized. Ngayon, Yusak, my question is, as of this point, what are we doing? What is the department doing to make sure that the plight of the teachers are well secured, no? not only addressed, but secured as of this point. Uh, na kung meron pong mangyari sa kanila, kung kakailangan nila yung testing nila, at kung lumabas na sila at meron, nahawaan sila, meron na silang pupuntahan at kukunan. We need to assure them eh. Hindi lang yung uh, just open-ended na may contribution. Assurance is very important in this case because without assurance, you don't have confidence. And without confidence, all of this will fail. Uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, I would, uh, with, with respect to the financial aspect, uh, we will request uh, Under Secretary uh, Sevilla uh, to provide uh, the answer. But uh, with respect to how we see the, uh, the teacher and non teaching uh, staff welfare from the health perspective, kasama po naman yan dun sa aming number eight, uh, malawak po yung health standards na yan, hindi lang po yan protocols kung hindi yung support that we give. Uh, uh, so, dalawa pong components ito, itong health standards na ito, and it, uh, in fact, it covers also the students if uh, should uh, we allow face-to-face -face at some point in the future. Uh, but uh, that health standards uh, is paired with the alternative work arrangements uh, that uh, we we have. Uh 
at doon nabanggit ko na mayroon namang kasama doon na uh, testing protocol ang tingin ko na hindi malinaw talaga at uh, nakita ko rin yung uh, uh, tugo ni Undersecretary Sevilla is the hospitalization uh, uh, component uh, And uh, I, I, right now, uh, nabanggit nyo yung aming monitoring. We have been uh, able to work with a, our internal support mechanisms, whether on within budget or off budget uh, mechanism as a DepEd uh, family. Uh, pero yung uh, baka ang mas makakasagot, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I Uh, si uh, Undersecretary Sevilla with respect to the hospitalization. So talagang feel health ngayon ang uh, ang component dyan pero wala kaming uh, my understanding is a subsidy for the hospitalization uh, itself. Pero yung pong testing ay malinaw doon na kung uh, related to uh, yung deployment of a teaching or non-teaching staff Uh, for na pumapasok sa mga uh, na, na de-deploy na may physical whether in an intermittent basis ay uh, nakalagay po doon that we will facilitate the the uh, testing uh, of the teacher and when we say facilitate it is either uh, we can spend for it or uh, through partnerships be able to uh, secure the testing of the Uh, personnel. Uh, we committed to the uh, media persons, uh, Mr. Chair, and we will submit also to this committee an update on our monitoring of uh, our COVID cases. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, ang nakalagay lang kasi po doon, and which we have to clarify with the task force, a cumulative food. Uh, we have figures for uh, Uh, active cases at saka yung mga probable cases but we just want to be very sure before we put this uh, information out uh, Mr. Chair but we will submit also to this committee the uh, latest update on the uh, COVID situation within the DepEd family uh, Sir Chair ilan na po ang uh, within your DepEd uh, system ilan na po ba ang na-infect with COVID? Uh, ang cumulative figure po na meron, uh, which is subject to uh, further uh, validation in the sense of from a management perspective and the uh, uh, task force, ay ang, uh, ang uh, cumulative po ay 598 uh, from the field reports and uh, 11 uh, from uh, CO. Uh, reports and this is a combination of uh, uh, a personnel teaching and non-teaching and uh, learners as well. Uh, uh, itong five, itong 598, you said, uh, sino po ang nagbayad uh, ng kanilang testing and then yung aftercare? Uh, hindi, who hindi paid for po, that? Hindi ko po kayo masasagot. I do not have that information uh, Uh, right now uh, dito po sa 11 ay eh, malamang kasama dito si Secretary Briones for example uh, who tested positive and uh, she was swabbed uh, by the Department of uh, Health for example at that time uh, eh, so dun po sa mga na-expose kay uh, Secretary ay uh, may ibang Eh, nagka symptoms na uh, na na test uh, pero hindi ko po kayo masagot kung saan ang galing yung uh, actual uh, funding i i know that there has also been uh, uh, some that uh, uh, nitong huli nung itong MECQ uh, at nag positive na uh, we committed uh, reimbursement but in the field hindi ko po uh, masagot kayo dun sa lahat ng cases na ito Mr. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Yes uh, you said just I just want to put emphasis no uh, eh, gusto ko idiin rin na we really need to take care of our people no in your case your constituents aside from the parents and and, and children are the teachers and they're the most important component to the success of this LCP. At uh, alam ko yung mga teachers natin, kagaya natin, natatakot rin sila lumabas eh. 
Alam nila pag lumalabas sila, delikado yung kanilang buhay. Alam nila pag nagkaka-interact sila, delikado yung kanilang buhay. So without any security as to testing, as to aftercare, mahirap po talagang uh, parang hindi buo yung kanilang uh, uh, loob para lumabas at uh, gawin yung kanilang dapat gawin. At uh, I think what we what the department needs to assure is their plight, no? their welfare. Uh, and not only assurance, but secure talaga na uh, kung may mangyari sa kanila, uh, meron silang pupuntahan. Uh, I would like Mr. to recognize Chair? you, Sek Sevilla. Yeah, you, yes. Sek Sevilla. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Kasi uh, I would also like to contextualize uh, my response to the media because the, the question raised uh, during the press call is very specific. The question was, is there a budget cover or will there be financial assistance given to our personnel who will be uh, found positive? And uh, this, the question was also specific to treatment and hospitalization, not testing. So, so let me uh, explain, uh, Mr. Senate, Mr. Chair, our uh, uh, stand on this. And we need the lawmakers to support us on this. The budget law does not include any budget item for treatment and hospitalization, I think, in all government agencies, not just DepEd. It is only DOH who has the authority to use their budget for uh, medical treatment and hospitalization. So even if we want to uh, even pay for their uh, treatment and hospitalization, the result will be a COVA finding to our department because there is no budget item that will authorize us to do that. What we have right now in our budget, and we have realigned actually some of our uh, regular programs, is the supplies and support mechanism to implement our minimum health standards, at least in number eight. And USEC NAPO is right in saying that this is not only for teaching position, but this covers all uh, teaching, non-teaching, teaching related, and uh, um, all administrative uh, staff as well. So meron po kami department order number 14, and this is a, an issuance, a guidelines uh, for the health standards to be implemented, not just in the offices, but also in the schools. And imagine how many schools we have right now, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, we have allowed the use of MOE to buy for the uh, prevention, uh, uh, disinfection, decontamination. And the testing actually is also included, uh, Mr. Chair, but if we will have all the testing expenses of all the personnel and the learners, ay talaga pong magkukulang ang budget ng DepEd dito. Kaya ang nangyari, we are uh, following the protocol of the Department of Health in terms of testing, like for example, the eligibility or the qualification before you are uh, before you will undergo rapid testing and the uh, swab testing. The rapid testing um, as well, we coordinated with the commission and audit, and they said that uh, we, we really have to seek a legal basis for us to use our funds on this. So it's, it would be very helpful, uh, Mr. Chair, if the legislators will also give us the authority. Uh, and of course, uh, if there's a legal basis, we also need the funding cover. And uh, we have uh, talked to DBM about this, and I, I think the really the limitation is one legal basis. Second is the availability of fund. But rest assured that um, all government employees, including DepEd, is uh, covered under the field health insurance, and anything that will happen to them will be covered by this uh, field health coverage. And uh, our employee welfare and the finance uh, strand will be giving the information and the protocol and procedures. In fact, dun po sa mga cases na sinabi ni Yusek Nepo, ay uh, namomonitor po namin at nabibigyan ng assistance ang ating mga empleyado, including the learners, as uh, Yusek Nepo said. Yung pong monitoring natin, I think, is really off budget, out of the personal care and effort of the department. And I think um, malaki rin po ang tulong ng local government units. And uh, Senator Wynne, you, you, you really know this, kahit po... Kami ay mga taga-deped, sasagutin ng local government pag alam nyo na meron pong kaso na isudyante, lalo na po kong teacher. So this is in cooperation with DOH, the local government unit, and the field health. But yeah. if there's a need to also provide under the deped budget, for example, financial assistance and medication or treatment, then it has to be authorized by your law. 
Yeah, Thank but you, you said have you have you, you you you're absolutely correct, no? All of us being government employees, meron tayong field health eh. Automatic na yan eh. Meron rin tayong GSIS automatic na yan. Uh, but have you networked with uh, PhilHealth to give special attention to our teachers, to our non-teaching personnel, considering that they will be executing a relatively risky you know, uh, learning continuity plan? My, my point of the matter here is they will be going out now. Eh? Or pupuntahan sila na magulang. No? Either way, may interaction. Ang punto ko lang naman is have we, uh, have we uh, exerted extra effort to secure their health needs and their uh, aftercare needs? Uh, granted, wala tayong budget sa 2020, but there are other ways, no? like PhilHealth. Nga. So have you networked with PhilHealth and make sure that uh, our teachers get some form of security? Yes, Mr. Chair. Our um, uh, Bureau of Health, uh, Bureau of Human Resource, and employee welfare are now, uh, there's an ongoing negotiation with field health on this. And ang ginagawa rin po namin talaga, uh, Mr. Chair, is yung localized. Kasi it, it cannot uh, be reported to the central office or the regional office. It has to happen really where the, the case is. At uh, yung pong field health is really um, working on, on this as well. So we, we will have the communication and the information as soon as uh, nagawa na po natin or na-finalize na natin yung partnership with Phil help on this. Uh -oh. You second, it, it's just, uh, um, gusto ko lang i, ano mo, for example, if I'm a teacher, and in my, uh, in my, uh, duty of executing the learning continuity play plan, nahawaan ako. Hindi natin maalis yan eh. No? May mga story nga, pumunta lang sa mall, nahawaan na. So assuming nahawaan siya, ano yung gagawin niya? Saan siya pwedeng kumuha ng Nang, uh, ng tulong para magpa-test. Of course, bumili ng gamot. And then, of course, may aftercare pa yan kung lumala yung sagot niya. So, yung sakit niya. So, ano yung gagawin ng isang guro para ma-access itong lahat? Mr. Chair, it is in the Department Order Number 14, all the procedures and protocols. So, we have a COVID task force down to school level. So, the teacher will have to report to our task force in the school. At meron pong coordinator dyan, isa sa ibabato po ka agad yan sa division office. The division office will coordinate with DOH and the local government unit. At uh, yun nga pong nangyayari, yung pong testing na binibigay sa ating mga naging uh, cases ay uh, courtesy of the DOH or LGU. Kaya yung tanong niyo po kanina, sinong gumagastos, most of them were uh, accommodated by our LGU. But of course, some of the uh, employees opted to do their own, lalo na po yung uh, kaya naman na nagmamadali rin. Halimbawa, there are cases sa emergency talaga. The question is, when they go to finance and they want to reimburse. And when we ask COA if we are allowed to reimburse, we were given a question that we need a legal basis to do that. Mm -mm. I think uh, right now, the fastest way is to tap field health and to tap GSIS for other needs. No? Ito talaga yung mga uh, insurance and safety nets na built in sa atin bilang isang government employee. And uh, ang ano ko lang naman is, I know PhilHealth now, uh, it's, um, uh, nababasa niya, I'm sure they're, 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 they have their hands full in, 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 in answering uh, uh, anomalies. Kailangan talaga extra effort to make sure that uh, mabigyan sila kaagad ng reimbursement, mabigyan kaagad sila ng tulong. Dahil alam ko yung PhilHealth rin matagal kung hindi, uh, hindi kayo magkakaroon ng extra uh, effort to link up with them. Uh, I'm, I'm, ito lang ako, it, nababahala lang ako kasi uh, lalabas na yung mga teacher natin eh. And kausap ko yung mga ibang teacher natin dito sa Valenzuela, natatakot talaga sila. And uh, the only way na pwede nating uh, uh, himasin yung kanilang takot, eh, i-assure natin, i-secure natin yung kanilang protection. Y yun ang aking punto. And uh, that's why I'm, I'm very compelled nga, eh, to be honest about it, I'm very compelled to recommend to postpone class opening if we don't address the welfare of our teachers and non-teaching staff, because they're as important as all of these things that we are talking about. No? If we don't secure their health condition, if we don't secure their aftercare condition, um, might as well postpone class opening dahil malalagay talaga sila sa delegado. So just to move forward, uh, Yusek and... Uh, Mr. Like Chair? Yes, uh, Yusek... Uh, 
uh, just a manifestation, a quick manifestation that uh, in uh, uh, habang na andito pa po itong readiness components that yung number eight uh, b- because even if I say it is subsumed there, I think it must be expressly stated as you uh, observed uh, that number eight uh, uh, should not be as uh, as uh, in other words might have a limited a sense of health standards but really uh, make it express here that it uh, also includes uh, teacher and non-teaching uh, staff welfare uh, so that it is clear that it is uh, covered and that also allows us to really specifically address that in our briefings uh, Mr. Uh, Chair. Thank you. Yes. Just a manifestation. Yes. Uh, before I continue, uh, let me recognize the presence of Senator Cayetano, who is here with us. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Uh, just to move on to this topic, uh, Yusekan, let, uh, request ko lang no, to submit to us um, a, a, a position paper on securing the health concern, securing the aftercare, securing the welfare of our teachers and non-teaching staff. Uh, just submit to us a position paper. Uh, kung meron na kayong networking with PhilHealth and DSIS, just elaborate on that. Ang gusto lang naman natin mapakita, I'm sure from DepEd and from us, is we have secured the welfare of their teachers insofar as health, insofar as learning continuity plan. So, yes, mas kompante sila ngayon lumabas at gawin itong pinapagawa natin sa kanila. No? Just to we move forward on this topic. Right. We, will, we will submit. Yes. Senator Cayetano? Yes, yes, on that topic, no, just just a very quick um response, no, um it's directed to USEC and and also what uh, you know for for more clarification on the questions you posed. Um you asked about what kind of support is available out there. You mentioned also uh, tapping into field health. May I just inform you, USEC and that um when you when you mentioned that it, as far as you know it's only DOH that has authority to use their funds, no, to um for testing or or uh, to take care for, for medical care of their staff. Um, you mentioned rapid death specifically. So I just want to spread it into the record, Mr. Chair, that uh, rapid deaths are not uh, being endorsed. If I think all of us are aware that uh, the, associ- the the alliance of various associations of health workers signed that letter, no, requesting uh, that mag right? And one of, and of seven recommendations, around two of them referred to their their very strong concern on the use of rapid tests. So since napakalaki ng population ng ating teachers, I just wanted to be sure that the DepEd decision makers are aware of that. In as much as it's very accessible, uh, the price is very reasonable, uh, the health experts are not recommending it. And as far as I know, um, national government is not allowed to use public funds to purchase it. So in your request that uh, your call to the legislators to support, of course we support, though I know the chair will uh, will uh, make that call as well, um, but just to clarify that issue po yung rapid test, no? Let's be, let's be clear about it kasi baka tayo mapunta and because you specifically mentioned it, I'm just clarifying that as far as I know, rapid test cannot be spent, uh, cannot be purchase with public funds. Thank you. Thank you uh, for that clarification, yes. S- Senator Chair. Pia. Uh, yes, go ahead. You said, uh, Anne. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Senator Pia Caetano, uh, for, for that. Because that, I think, is the explanation why there's a high demand for the to do it. And uh, we really are constrained because of that finding. We are aware, uh, Senator Kaya nga po, uh, yung mga demand ng mga teachers on that, uh, we, we have been explaining the uh, limitation of yeah. the department. However, what I was requesting earlier, uh, Senator, is that medical treatment and hospitalization as well is not authorized uh, in our budget. So, sa rin po yun sa mga concern na I think should also be addressed. I have no issue naman, have no issue naman on that, but I just know that syempre lahat kaming... 
uh, legislators were very sensitive dun sa needs nyo, di ba? So baka mag-craft kami ng policy tas masama yung rapid test kasi yun yung question. But I'm glad you clarified that because I've also asked this alliance of health workers, so itong mga specialists natin, to make that statement para maintindihan din ng tao kung bakit hindi nyo pwedeng gawin. And that's exactly what you said. Now, the demand is there. And baka akala lang nila ayaw nyo. And not only do you not have the authority to use funds in general, but even if you are granted the authority, I doubt if it will include um, rapid tests kasi nga it's not authorized. Thank you. I'm glad you asked the clarification. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pia. In fact, uh, Senator Pia, you know this better than I do. In, in Bayanihan too, we already specified spending for PCR tests. Dati yes. nung sa Bayanihan, one kasi is generic testing lang eh. Oh, kasi, and, and I mean, as we all know naman, we're all learning from, from this, di ba? As early as Bayanihan 1, uh, let me just spread into the record, the same Health Alliance group were already um, strongly advising that uh, it should, we should not be dependent on rapid tests. But at that time, we will, we will call Mr. Chair, di ba? Rapid tests yung available, eh, di ba? So, syempre, we, we seem to be constrained to respond in some way and to make testing available. But their position has never changed, no? Yun pa rin up to now. And now that our PCR tests are much more efficient, uh, much more easily available, uh, the more na they are pushing na dyan na lang tayo mag-focus. And I believe there are other tests coming out na better pa rin ng rapid. So whatever recommendations we make, Mr. Chair, let's just put the word it should be general enough na as, ano, as authorized by DOH or as prescribed by um, our health professionals. Something like that, no? Para lang walang may Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pia, for clarifying that. Uh, Senator Pia, any uh, questions on uh, the update of uh, DepEd? Uh, we're moving to the second part, which is to discuss the the laws of the other senators. But before we move on to the second part. Just I was just listening, naman, so I don't naman have any specific questions. Your, your questions, Senator Nancy's questions, Senator Cole's questions are similar to mine. So okay na po ako. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Senator uh, Pia. Um, we, with that, uh, we move on to the second portion of uh, our agenda, and this is to discuss the several laws that I mentioned earlier, uh, specifically uh, the law that uh, Senator uh, Angara filed, uh, Senator Tolentino, Senator Lapid, Senator Revilla, and yours truly. And this pertains to um, uh, disaster preparedness, and also inclusion of uh, disaster preparedness and mitigation in the curriculum. So I would just like uh, to ask um, DepEd uh, for their comment on all of these laws. Uh, all of these laws are, are one way or the other similar to each other. So I would just like to ask for an omnibus uh, comment on the, uh, uh, on the uh, laws that I mentioned. And uh, Yusek Omali. Uh, you might want to uh, comment on this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. May we ask our USEC dads, please, to... Yes, uh, USEC dads, you're recognized. Good morning, po. Uh, good, good noon, uh, Senator Wien. Uh, good noon, po, to everyone. Um, the Department of Education, po, um, fully supports the uh, proposed bills that will make sure that the concepts um, being proposed will be uh, part of the curriculum. Be it also known that uh, the concepts are integrated in our existing curriculum. So um, uh, making this more permanent through the laws would really uh, allow us to make sure that the concepts will be in our curriculum. Formally. You, you said, let me just know. Uh, I, I just want to uh, uh, point out the proposal of Senator Angara. Ang kanyang proposal, uh, inclusion of pandemics, epidemics, and other public health crises as part of the curriculum. And then the other one, uh, his proposal is requiring the teaching of disaster awareness, disaster mitigation as part of the curriculum. So um, both uh, will touch on the curriculum, no? and the other proposals are, um, are more or less similar. No? So uh, uh, what's your comment on that? No? Uh, because I, I know that uh, we're 
decongesting the curriculum. No, I think we all agree that uh, the curriculum has has become congested over the years, and in fact, the reduction of your uh, competencies is a signal that uh, the ped is in fact decongesting. So, what's your comment on on uh, these two proposals? Um, there's always a way to integrate the concepts. Um, Honorable Senator Wynn. So um, we will uh, continue to integrate those concepts, uh, even as we are doing uh, the integration of uh, concepts related to disaster preparedness. Mm. Uh, right now, I understand the merong kayong disaster, some form of disaster preparedness in senior high school. Yes, pa. Uh, is this proposal of Senator Angara? different or similar to your uh, what you are doing right now it actually reinforces or um yeah um supports the the things we're doing now okay and then um going on to disaster preparedness now i would like to uh, ask the head of the disaster preparedness uh, uh task force um to present to us the efforts of deped when it comes to disaster preparedness and learning continuity. No? Uh, I, I know for a fact that the disaster preparedness, most of the literature I read coming from DEPED focuses on the physical aspect of, of disaster preparedness. No? The learning continuity is not as pronounced. So may we request from uh, the head of your disaster preparedness to present the efforts of DEPED uh, in so far as disaster preparedness is concerned. Thank you, Senator Wynn. I think it's Dir Director Roni. Um, yes. Thank you, Pa. We recognize Director Roni. Hello, good morning, Pa. Yes, Director, go ahead. Yes, Pa. Good morning, um, Honorable uh, Senator. Yun pong sa disaster preparedness, una po, um, in fact, meron pong integration na sa curriculum. We have mapped out, in fact, well, what subject areas um, is DRR, climate change, and even peace education uh, integrated in the curriculum. We have the mapping of that po. Very recently in February, we were trying to actually uh, kumbaga adjust make it more uh, prominent, concise. So we have a working group between the DRRMS and the Bureau of Curriculum Development. We did a workshop at Simeo Inotech Pop. We can give you what we have done um, in that regard. And uh, the thing that to do is actually to further um, enhance this via uh, looking at the MELCs. Kasi hindi pa po yung MELCs ang pinipan noon, kundi yung K-12 talaga. So there is currently in uh, those uh, subject areas, yung uh, climate change, DRR, and this uh, education and integration in the current curriculum. Let me make that clear po in various areas and in various uh, uh, grade uh, levels. The second thing po is, you're right, um, Senator, yung disaster preparedness is very much part of uh, various subjects uh, kasama din po yung sa aralin panlipunan, buong isang content po on climate change. Yun pong mga what to do before, during, and after a hazard, kasama po yun. Makikita nyo sa MAPE, very pati first aid po, kasama po yun. Very comprehensive po yun, uh, doon sa mga subjects na yun. And there is, uh, you pointed it right, in the junior-senior high school, a course actually, on disaster readiness uh, na course po. So meron po ang DepEd, um, medyo matagal na rin po, ilang taon na. We can present that, uh, provide you po the necessary documents to point out where integration is actually or has been happening. So And then may mga uh, curricular activities po tayo. Halimbawa, ang risk assessment, every June po, pagpasukan, reiterate natin ang ating uh, uh, through a memo, yung ating department order pertaining to the student-led watching and hazard mapping. Kasi yun po ay nagiging pahagi ng planning ng school through the school DRRM coordinator either headed by the 
school principal or school head or a designated uh, teacher doon po sa mga planning ng activities na ginagawa ng mga bata. Marami po sa ating mga schools ay mga may tinatawag na uh, DRR camp or camping every year na ginagawa. May mga schools din na may tinatawag na Batang Emergency Response Team. Iba-iba po ang forma. And meron po tayo every year. And we can also provide the data ng schools natin every year ang sumasali sa nationwide simultaneous earthquake drill na isinasagawa ng Endream C, hindi lang para sa mga ahensya, pero tayo sa DepEd ay sinasama natin ang buong mga paaralan natin nationwide. And meron din pong mga contingency planning sa school level kasi may punto po kaming binababa yung DRRMS sa ating mga divisions to conduct contingency planning. In addition, we have funds actually that train for school DRRM coordinators. Ina-extend pa lang po namin itong mga nakaraang dalawang taon na hindi na lang yung school DRRM coordinator. Siyempre facing po dahil din sa, sa concerns ng funds. Meron po kaming modules, 23 modules, uh, kung tama pa yung alala ko, na ginawa namin since 2016 at yun ang ginagamit na modules sa pang-train no? dito sa mga ating mga empleyado. Ito po ay ginawa with the uh, members of the education cluster, um, UNICEF, Save the Children, at iba pa po kasama ang Red Cross. In fact, sa module na to, yun pong first aid um, ay module ng um, PRC, ng Philippine Red Cross. Hindi po namin binago yon pero pina-adapt nila yon as is. At sila din po ang mga resource persons natin. So lahat po ng kurso, ay iba-ibang partners po. May pool of partners din po kami, both for preparedness, response, at doon sa ginagawa nating psychosocial services, may pool of uh, resource persons po tayo na namomobilize natin every year. And on a quarterly basis, we actually have a systematic regular planning with all the partners po para sa programa ng uh, DRRM, Climate Change, at sa Peace Education. So, yun po. So, I think ang, ang tingin po, um, but we will provide, as you said so, Senator, comments, so uh, omnibus comments on the various uh, uh, bills that have been drafted by uh, the Senate. But uh, gusto ko lang din pong i-emphasize that many have actually been um, working po because uh, Since 2010, noong inilabas ng government yung Endream Act of 2010, halos lahat ng ahensya na membro ng Endream C ay meron pong DRRM na mga opisina. Yun po ang pinagmulan ng aming opisina sa batas na yon. Yun po ang kanyang legal basis. At mula noon ay na-integrate po sa planning and budgeting. Kaya may budget kami, though limited, as I have earlier told you way back, kung matulungan din kami doon, though limited, ay mag umaandar po. One of the greatest challenge that we recognize in the department in terms of learning continuity ay yun pong uh, curriculum. Because we have never had this kind of a situation po na pandemic. Kaya challenging po sa level ng curriculum. Kasi kung ito ay naging bagyo lang, naging lindo, lahat po ng mga temporary learning spaces, emergency feeding, yung aming pong uh, ano pa, learner's kits, teacher's kits at lahat ay regular pong umaandar. May challenges lang sa procurement but they are moving um, senator. Ang greatest challenge po dahil kakaiba at nasa bahay ang mga tao at lahat ay ito pong curriculum, delivering it in a very different context. Kayo yun po ang tingin ko na kailangan pagtuunan ng mga bills because all the rest are actually po uh, working naman within the uh, parameters, within the protocols of the Endream C and all the laws and the uh, ano po, policies at mga operational, uh, operational guidelines and planning that are actually regularly happening among member agencies of the NDRC. So yun po ang aking uh, take the on Senator uh, Win. Thank you uh, Director Ronnie.
Thank you uh, for that. And uh, we'd like to request from uh, DepEd a position paper on all of the bills that uh, I mentioned earlier. And I'd like to also request uh, from the body uh, the same, a position paper uh, on all of those bills. We recognize Senator Pia. Thank you again, Mr. Chair. Um, sorry, who was the one speaking? Um, I, I didn't catch your name. DepEd is doing their job. So in that, for that reason, I did not see a specific bill. But since we're talking about it, I feel preventive health care, a lot of that will, will end up in terms, will, a lot of that can only be um, implemented by way of educating and making people aware of what is preventive health care. No? And so if you dissect that, um, my question would be simple things like, where is it in the curriculum that you now talk about preventive health care and tell the children how important eight hours of sleep is, the quality of food, tie that into the um, food supply, that they plant their own food in their own homes, that you have sustainable communities that can, um, uh, uh, that can produce you know, the bulk of the thing. years ago, hindi pa uso yung isig. So, kung, kung hindi tinuturo yung critical thinking, pinamemorize lang kung ano yung lifestyle diseases na yan, edi hindi may isip nitong batang to who's now in high school na, oh nga, lifestyle disease din yung isig na yan kasi meron din, ano, no, meron din effect pala sa akin. So, that's why this, this um, critical thinking is so important. And then, um, I don't know how you will, um, you will be instilling collaboration at this point because normally when you have regular classes, diba, they can collaborate, they can uh, work together. I won't go back into that. I don't expect an answer now. But I'm just saying can we ensure that the teachers are, are delivering the education and ensuring that these four C's are being learned by the students in the process in connection with all these other subject matters that um, my colleagues and I want to be included in the curriculum. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Yes, yes, like that. Go ahead. So, yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Senator Pia. Uh, you requested report on how we um, covered uh, health issues you mentioned in our curriculum. We will submit as soon as possible, including this um, um, strategy on how the 21st century skills are um, actually developed among the learners. Be assured that we have ongoing research activities, and I think there are ex existing results, initial results that we can also share with, with you and the committee relative to how the 21st century skills are covered um, in the actual classes and even up to the assessment, because um, we understand that uh, some of this may not uh, be uh, assessed using the traditional uh, paper and pencil approaches. Uh, we have actually um, uh, be able to uh, discuss among ourselves how this could be done. Um, and precisely that is the challenge, no, Mr. Chair, because um, when you develop these skills, they, they are not the type that will be used in a typical uh, year-end um, assessment test. No? Pero technically, pag nagawa nila ng maayos to, critical thinking, um, they, they learned how to communicate. There's no way naman na hindi rin naman sila papasa doon, di ba? But initially, there might be a gap. Initially, you may not see it reflected in, a, in the memorization that is normally required in traditional examinations. Pero umaandan na yung critical thinking. And when it's, not naman, not naman when the process is complete, but when the process is more mature in the mind of the learner, then it's so much easier for them to learn, di ba? Because at the end of the day, mag-memorize nga siya, ipasado siya sa lahat ng multiplication, addition, subtraction, but they don't have the skills of communication, collaborating with their colleagues. Well then, ano din naman yung na-create nating tao at the end of the, at the end of 18 years, di ba? What kind of a citizen is that who does not have that ability to collaborate, that ability to communicate well, that cannot help us contribute to the survival and, and um, the success of our nation without that critical thinking. So it's a challenge, I recognize, but we shouldn't really consider it a stumbling block, diba? Right? And that's where there, there should be less, um, I, I'm not, I mean, that's where I, 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 I will not say that I'm anti-testing, but that's where I am not really a proponent of testing because 
you will fail to capture this kung test-based lang tayo. Yeah. Diba? And precisely because we did so poorly in the PISA test, then ang, ang siyempre reaction natin, teka muna, eh, ayus, ayusin naman natin yun. So I'm not against it because what what other ways do you have to to monitor? But it should not be the end. So yun lang, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Senator. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. Yes, you, Sir Kumali. Opo, uh, very quickly po, uh, a, a, a reiteration and maybe another way of uh, politely stating the DepEd's official position with respect to uh, measures that seeks to uh, legislate curriculum. Indeed, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, maybe, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, measures that seeks, for example, to provide uh, topics to be thought as a standalone subject. Medyo mabigat po ito, Mr. Chair. But uh, if measures are, 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 are just there to mandate that we should integrate this in our uh, various subjects, the way it's articulated by our Director Ronnie Ko kanina, but I, I want to be very specific, Mr. Chair. We have submitted to this Honorable Committee a copy of our BELCP and the Reduce Most Essential learning uh, competencies which includes the matrix yung sinasabi po namin reduce na 5,689 uh, MELC na lamang po uh, one of the annexes so halimbawa po Mr. Chair para po magkaroon po tayo ng idea sa page 263 meron na po ang committee na ito pero pwede po namin ibigay po muli ito po yung aming curriculum matrix fourth quarter grade 1 on the subject health, meron po dyan, itinuturo po namin, may mga modules kami, so that the learner will be able to demonstrate understanding of safe and responsible behavior to lessen risk and prevent injuries in day-to-day -day living. Tinuturo po yan, fourth quarter, weeks 1 to 10, nakalagay po kung ano po yung bawat uh, dapat po matutunan ng bata. Uh, isa pa pong halimbawa, that's, uh, grade, that's first grade, Mr. Chair. Second grade, fourth quarter po muli, people to demonstrate and uh, our children to have an understanding of basic rules to ensure safety at home and in school. That could be seen at page 265, Mr. Chair. So, kompleto po ito, understanding of risk to ensure uh, other things that you know the, the the bill seeks to to achieve. So nangyayari na po ito. Uh, ngunit, uh, of course, we will always say that we we are all aware that the legislative power is plenary. We will always submit to the collective wisdom of uh, Congress and this honourable committee. So we we re we just would like to request, and and that's what we saw in all the various bills. So long as this will not be mandated to be thought as a standalone subject, uh, the way our USEC Dutch mentioned, we, we, we really uh, support and we welcome this measures. And finally, Mr. Chair, we could also look at Section 6 of RA10533, Mr. Chair, which uh, provides a mechanism. It mandates for the creation of a curriculum consultative committee. Yung po, Mr. Chair, Baka po uh, pwede po datin doon dalhin lahat po ng mga panukalang batas na may kinalaman po sa curriculum. Dito po sa curriculum consultative committee na ito na inilagay din po ng uh, kongreso sa ating uh, K-12 law. At yun po yung committee uh, together with uh, various uh, agencies including CHED and TESDA and our uh, stakeholders, private sectors. And we will be very glad to also invite uh, this honorable committee, including the committee of our Senator Pia Cayetano, as a mechanism to look at all measures po, Mr. Chair, that uh, seeks to uh, or seek to amend uh, the K-12 curriculum. Baka dun po, uh, maganda pong mekanismo yun. Binigay na rin po iyon uh, with all the wisdom of our uh, legislators when they legislated and enacted RA10533. Kayo po na po mismo, Mr. Chair, ang naglagay po ng mga mekanismo para po tingnan muli yung aming uh, basic education curriculum. So that's Section 6. And uh, we will be very happy
to 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 hear inputs from our Congress on this matter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Yusek. Personally, I'm also quite uh, very careful, no, with um, adding too many uh, concepts in the curriculum, especially legislated curriculum. Uh, I'm very careful with that, and I would uh, listen and heed to the recommendation of the Department of Education. Um, we all know that curriculum needs to be dynamic and uh, it should respond to the times as, in, as quick as possible. And uh, I know also that in our many discussions that uh, uh, our direction is to um, decongest the curriculum and focus on um, competencies that are attuned to the time. So uh, I, we will request from uh, DepEd and also from the body a position paper on all of these laws, uh, but rest assured that we will uh, uh, put a lot of uh, weight to the uh, position paper of DepEd as to uh, the curriculum and how to comments po on uh, the update and uh, um, uh, the bills that we were discussing. Hello. Hello. Hi. Can I be heard po? Yes, yes, Hello. Dr. Ginny. Yes, you're very clear. Very clear po. Super clear. Thank you po. Magandang hapon, Mr. Chair and everyone in the group. Uh, the Philippine Normal University po does not post any um, any uh, uh, ano ba to? negative reactions to all the bills uh, filed. Lamang po ay gusto ko lang dagdagan na uh, uh, sinusuportahan po namin ang layunin ng uh, Senado na wag i-legislate ang curriculum. Uh, napakarami pong uh, nangyayari sa, sa mundo ngayon at ay uh, hindi natin ma determine at any given time. So legislating a curriculum is a disservice to the openness of, of learning as a whole. Uh, another level po ay, uh, ang tinitingnan po natin ng committee ninyo, Mr. Chair, at ng mga kasama natin dito, ay ang basic education curriculum. Uh, Mulit-muli ko pong ilalatag na kapag ka ang basic education curriculum ay hindi nagmatch sa curriculum ng ma, ng ng uh, ng uh, kolehiyong pangguro o ng uh, CHED curriculum for the pre-service teacher education hindi na naman po magiging handa ang ating mga guro na ituro at pagyamani ng anumang idadagdag natin sa curriculum ng Department of Education so palagi po namin isinusulong sa pamantasang normal ng Pilipinas na palaging kailangan silang magmamatch ang uh, lawak ng curriculum ng basic education ay dapat lawak din ng uh, ng curriculum ng pre-service teacher education ganun din ang training sa aspeto pong iyan uh, nais naming uh, sabihin na ang uh, ang konteksto po ng curriculum ngayon in the whole world ay uh, outcome based ibig sabihin pag tinuro ang 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 competencies laging ang titingnan natin ay anong naging outcome natin ano ang naging ano ang naging epekto ng uh, competencies na natutunan ng bata in the PISA uh, results po uh, ang pagtingin ay hindi competency kung hindi ang pagtingin ay lawak ng pag-i-integrate ng mga competencies. And sadly, uh, baka hindi ito ang pagtingin natin sa curriculum. We still account for an individual segmented competencies, which we hope will turn into an integrated competency, an integrated curriculum. So kanina po sa so susugan ko rin yung sinasabi ni uh, sinabi ni Senator Pia Cayetano kanina, ang konteksto ng disaster preparedness, disaster resiliency ay importanteng aspeto ng curriculum. Sadly, ito po ay itinuturo as segmented again rather than integrated in the learning of science, for example, in the learning of critical thinking, in the learning of logic, in the learning of culture, right? Even in the learning of our indigenous knowledge, our indigenous um, concepts. So, uh, yun po ang isinusulong namin. Finally, Mr. Chair, at sa mga kasamahan, ang uh, ang mga guru po, muli ko pong isusulong na uh, tingnan natin din ang aspeto ng ating mga guru sapagkat kapag tinignan natin lamang ang curriculum, you see, curriculum is a piece of document. It will result in uh, changes, big changes in the community. But the curriculum is half of the, half only of the, of the indication of a good of a good education the other half is uh, is our teachers now our teachers are the the components the more imp most important component to be able to deliver the curriculum so pag tiningnan po natin ang curriculum sana po imating nandi natin ang aspeto where our teachers are dahil uh, kapag isinulong natin ang isinulong ang uh, 
ang mga bagay papunta sa curriculum, sana laging kadikit ang uh, ang uh, pag-lift uh, ng ating mga guro para ito'y ma-deliver contextually. Uh, finally po, uh, sasabihin ko na, na kami po'y natutuwa sa mga bills na naipasa. Ma naniniwala po kami na, uh, sorry, na i-file. Naniniwala po kami na ito ay makakatulong sa patuloy nating pag-aaral ng ating education system, not only in the learning continuity plan of the Department of Education, but also that of um, that of the future, that of looking into the future for the benefit of our children. Salamat po. Uh, bear that in mind in, in finalizing the law. Um, I can see uh, Governor Dax Kua, uh, who is the president of uh, ULAP. Uh, Governor Dax, any comments? Uh, we tackled two things. No, One is the update from DepEd, and then number two, uh, the bills uh, that were filed by several senators on uh, pandemics and disaster response. So you can comment on any of those uh, two topics, uh, Governor Dax. Salamat po, uh, uh, Senator Gatchalian, to all the members of the uh, committee, uh, to all the other senators po na nandito and the resource persons. Um, good uh, afternoon. Uh, the bills that are pending in your honorable committee, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, we support uh, all the bills. Uh, and we have a general recommendation lang po na sana when there's a crafting of the IRR, eh, baka pwede pong ma-include ang uh, ULAP as a member of the team that will uh, indeed craft the IRR. So, and then one very minor specific recommendation dun sa mga volunteers, uh, dun sa uh, sa full resumption, baka pwede lang pong expand pa. So, we have um, articulated that position in our uh, submitted position paper, Mr. Chair. Mm. Uh, lastly, um, uh, if I may be so bold, uh, Senator, uh, I was informed that there was a hanging question earlier regarding the reopening of and resumption of school. Eh, sa tingin ko po, Senator, um, Maganda naman yung intention ng DepEd, at lalo na sa mga areas that can manage to reopen school. Um, uh, but uh, I think um, even the situation where certain areas are in And then uh, from the onset of this uh, crisis, uh, apat na lalawigan in parating what, zero COVID. Batanes, Aurora, Dinagat, and Crino. Pero as of July 21, nawala na yung Crino. Actually, ah, sige. Sige, Senator. Apparently, I heard, no? I heard that uh, meron, na kayong, meron na kayong cases dyan or case no? uh, in Crino. 
we registered our first uh, case um the kailan ba yun? two days ago two days ago and uh we're still uh we we have already started our contact tracing ang uh, nakakapagtaka senator Mr. Chen hindi namin alam kung saan nanggaling kasi itong taong ito ay hindi hindi walang travel history at talagang walang exposure sa sa known covid patient. So ang ang tanong diyan saan nanggaling? Is it nanggaling kaya yan sa mga taong kasama niya sa trabaho or sa bahay or nanggaling kaya sa mga gamit na siguro syempre someone in that in, in their community or in their household uh, lumalabas para bumili ng ng necessities. So saan kaya nanggaling? That's still a puzzle for us. Grant, uh, given that uh, this is our first case. Yeah, I think that reinforces that the situation is very volatile. Eh. Um, ngayon, wala ka, pero bukas meron na. And di natin alam kung gaano ka lawak pa yung pagkalat nito sa isang lugar. Because I was monitoring the provinces na wala. And Kirino constantly wala. no? And only nga lang nagulat ako na nawala na dun sa mga zero cases. So goes to show na talagang very volatile ang situation. But from OLAP, Governor, do you recommend, um, uh, sorry, uh, from OLAP, uh, what is the sentiment of the local government units? Are, are we ready uh, by August 24? Are we going to be ready by August 24 in terms of opening classes? Uh, from, from a local government standpoint. Uh? Um, yun nga, Senator, eh, Mr. Chair, kasi talagang... Um... Depende sa context talaga eh. No, lalo na kung nari, um, siguro I would presume na kung, kung nasa urban setting or highly urbanized in, in the metro area at marami namang area ang covered by internet and most families have gadgets or just in the case of uh, Valenzuela, the mayor has a, a strong uh, program subsidizing gadgets, then uh, possible siguro eh, dahil pwede nilang gawin sa bahay. Pero kung yung mga malalayo, medyo iba talaga ang sitwasyon, uh, Mr. Chair. And that's why contextualization will be, in my in my own opinion, very, very important. Um, I'd like to share with you though that um, the League of Provinces, um, which is one of the pillars of the ULAP, uh, as a member of the ULAP, no? Uh, has expressed a recommendation to again postpone the uh, opening. So uh, that is the position of the uh, LPP as uh, by Governor Velasco in many uh, forums that we have uh, opened this topic. Um, hmm. I share to you. Know, Mr. Chair, con context plays a very important role because ang hirap pong um, magpataw ng isang rule sa isang bansa na iba't iba po yung uh, sitwasyon. And congratulations mm -hmm. to Valenzuela for, for your uh, great initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Gov. Um, well, definitely that's the uh, uh, um, direction right now. No? August 24 um, uh, is the school opening. But uh, there's an uncertainty right now in mga areas under MECQ, no? And whether matutuloy ito o hindi. No? So I recommended to DEPED uh, kung matutuloy in MECQ, then uh, we, sh we should postpone school opening. No? Because obviously the MECQ is a signal that the situation is not improving. So thank you. Thank you, Gov. Is it Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, Yusek Kumali. Opo, on, on that particular uh, ano, uh, intervention of our GovDaxCo and then the subsequent comment of the Honorable Chair, may, may, may I share some views uh, ng ating pong, uh, kalihim, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, base po sa kanya pong uh, malalim na pakikipag-usap po. Ang ating pong kalihim, Leonor Lining Magtolis Briones po, Mr. Chair, talaga pong tulad ng nabanggit po ninyo, halos hindi po na natutulog. At uh, patuloy po, lalo na nung nangyari nga po itong deklarasyon ng MECQ, ano tong relasyon po nito, ano pong epekto nito sa ating school opening. Talaga pong uh, paulit-ulit na kinausap po yung ating mga regional directors, mga school division superintendent para makuha po yung kanilang pananaw dito. At ito po yung klaro po sana, Mr. Chair, dahil alam ko po, po 
may mga mamamahayag po na nandito dito uh, sa ngayon. Hindi hindi po natin isasaalang-alang ang kaligtasan ng kahit sino man maging ang ating pong mga guro, hindi gurong kawani ng ating kagawaran. Uh, Lalong-lalo na po ang uh, mga mag-aaral po natin, pati ang mga magulang, sa ating pong uh, sa ngayong uh, desisyon na magpapatuloy po ang August 24 school opening sa ating pong pangapampublikong paaralan. So ano pong ibig sabihin nito, Mr. Chair? Ang direktiba po ng ating Mamliling Briones ay doon po sa mga lugar na dineklarang MECQ, wala pong uh, uh, pamamahagi ng mga self-learning modules o retrieval na mangyayari na ating pong ini-envision when we do uh, the, 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 the BELCP and the way we are articulating it for the first two weeks, Mr. Chair. Ang sabi po ng ating Mamliling Briones, dito po sa mga lugar na nadeklarang MECQ, kaya wala po dapat tayong ipangamba na baka po mahawa ang ating mga guro dahil epektibo po yung rules natin dito on alternative work arrangement na hindi naman po sila inuobligang pumasok sa ating mga paaralan o kahit ano man pati yung mga regional offices, etc. Dahil nga po, Mr. Chair, yung first two weeks natin will be devoted to psychosocial intervention and debriefing activities. Yung mga lugar, Mr. Chair, na kung saan mayroon naman pong kakayanan, lalong-lalo na po sa mga pampribadong paaralan, tulad po ng nabagit kanina ng ating uh, uh, kaibigan si Attorney Noel Estrada, na online, they are very ready. They're very much... So, so we cannot even say we, we postponed school opening, for example, po, Mr. Chair, sa Metro Manila. Dahil marami rin naman po dito, online-based learning po, Mr. Chair, ay maaari. Inuulit ko po, sa first two weeks, wala pong, wala pong mangyayaring uh, uh, talagang mahigpit na pangangailangan sa ating pong, uh, uh, mga self-learning modules. Kung kaya uh, yung mga sinasabi po natin na baka mahawa, ay hindi po dapat mangyari. Dahil mismo si Ma'am Liling Briones na po nagsabi, hindi po pwede yan. Dahil tulad po ng sinabi ninyo, mahalaga po ang kaligtasan ng ating mga kaguruan. Ang isang hamon po kasi, Mr. Chair, so that's the decision of the Department of Education right now as we speak. So even in MECQ, tuloy po ito, pero wala nga pong aktividad. Uh, pasensya na po kayo paulit-ulit kasi yun po ang pinangangamba ng lahat na baka mahawa sila dahil nga puro psychosocial activities lang naman po ito. Ang hamon po kasi, Mr. Chair, kapag pinag-usapan po natin ang uh, 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 suspension of uh, school opening, yun talagang imumove po natin sa lugar pong ito, uh, Mr. Chair. Hindi ko po sinasabi na wag po natin gawin na wala po tayo, ayaw po natin pangunahan ng ating mamdiling Briones, baka dumating po yung punto na gano'n na nga ang magiging desisyon. Pero ang isa pong hamon dyan, Mr. Chair, ay pag hinusog po yan, ng isang buwan, logically, yung April 30 na school, uh, logically, Mr. Chair, na end of school uh, calendar will now become May 30. And then so on so, so forth. Yun po yung unang, uh, at uh, lalo na po ngayon, uh, 2021, 2022, magkakaroon po ng eleksyon, Mr. Chair, binabahagi lang po natin na ang ating mga silid-aralan po, buwan po bago po mag-eleksyon ng 2022, tuloy-tuloy po yan eh. Uh, ay uh, kakailanganin ng ating mga silid-aralan. Pero inuulit ko po, napakaganda po nung batas kung meron po talagang, uh, uh, talagang sitwasyon na dapat pong isuspindi, bakit po hindi? Ngunit nung binuo po yung BELCP, Mr. Chair, and even if we look at the existing MECQ guidelines of IATF, if we look at the guidelines there, what is being prohibited is face-to-face -face learning, which we are not definitely not doing naman. Uh, uh, by August 24. At, at ano po, Mr. Chair, yung, yung BELCP talaga pong ikinasayan para nga po makita itong precisely itong mga sitwasyon pong ganito. At ang isang hamon dito po, Mr. Chair, ay paano po kung bilang polisiya ay yun po ang ating gagawin na kapag may MECQ suspendido ang klase. Mr. Chair, dati po nasa ECQ tayo sa Metro Manila, nag-MECQ nag-GCQ, tapos ngayon nag-MECQ uli. Sa mga tuwid, pwede po uli mangyari yan, dalawa, tatlong buwan po muli. So wala na naman po bang pag-aaral na mangyayari. Ang sabi po ng ating kagawaran ng edukasyon, ng ating mamiling Briones. So sa ngayon po, that should be taken care of. Pasensya na kayo, Mr. Chair, paulit-ulit ko sinasabi, wala namang gaano gaga uh, learning that will really take place. And we will adjust 
the activities in this MECQ areas. Pero meron din po siyang utos na in the future, pag nangyari uli ito, we should be able to navigate this kind of situation. Dahil hindi naman po pwede po na bawat MECQ suspended doon ang klase. But as a last option, Mr. Chair, yung sinabi po ni Ginoong Willie Cabral, very viable option. We could treat it as hindi naman po natin kailangan iusog ang, uh, ang, uh, ang ating school opening and thereby if we do that, iuusog din natin yung ending ng school calendar. Pwede rin naman po natin gamitin yung ating kasalukuyang alituntunin sa pagsususpindi po ng klase maski wala pong pandemya. Yun po yung nasabi ni Ginoong Willie Cabral kanina. And then that's possible. That's the present uh, guidelines that is effective right now. May bagyo, walang paso. Tapos hahabulin na lamang po natin by way of uh, make-up classes. So that may mean additional modules to be learned, uh, distant uh, learning uh, mode or manner ng ating mga anak. Kung sa halip na sampung modules lamang ang kanyang kailangan basahin sa loob ng isang linggo, baka maging dalawang po, ahabulin natin. So may mga ganun pong pagsaalang-alang. Pero gusto ko lang po sana klaruin, kaya po ako nag-intervene ng ganito. Klarong-klaro po na ang ating mamliling briones, tinitingnan po lahat yan. At sa ngayon, yung amin pong binabanggit nga, dahil uh, wala naman pong, siguro pang limang ulit ko na po ito, Mr. Chair, pagpaumanin ninyo, na mangyayaring aalis ang mga guro dito sa mga may MECQ area, bibisita, dahil inadjust nga po eh. Yun po ang sabi ni Ma'am Liling. I-adjust ang, uh, ang uh, i-deliver nating mga uh, na, na pag-aaral para tumugon dito sa mga agam-agam. Dahil talaga naman po yan ay primordial, uh, it's one of the primordial, it's not the, 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 the primary consideration of our secretary. Kaya sana po, maunawaan po ng lahat na hindi po ganun lang kas, kasi uh, ka, na parang uh, hindi namin naririnig ang lahat ng mga nasasabi. We are adjusting naman po. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you, Yusek. <clears throat> well, we have to admit, no, kung ang situation ay lumalala, then may mga limitations rin tayo sa gagawin natin. And uh, part of this uh, learning continuity plan is um, physical movement no? uh, yung pagbibigay uh, ng uh, learning continue uh, yung self learning modules uh, yung mga parents pupunta sa eskwelahan meron talagang physical movement and uh, wala naman kagustuhan na lumala yung sitwasyon no in fact uh, I was really hoping for the best na by August 24 eh, mag-stabilize situation but we just need to admit that uh, the situation is becoming quite uncertain. Sabi nga ni, 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 ni uh, Governor Dax, hindi nga niya alam kung saan nanggagaling because it's really very uncertain right now. Ang uh, sinasabi ko lang naman is uh, the situation right now, and it seems to me that uh, it's not improving. No? At uh, we just have to respond uh, accordingly if the situation is not improving. That's why we created that law is to give uh, the, the flexibility to postpone uh, school opening. But uh, of course, that decision will rest on uh, uh, on a bigger picture that uh, the president and Ayata will analyze. But on the ground, no, ang naririnig ko lang kasi on the ground, Yusek, yung mga teachers natin talagang pag sinabi mong school opening, ang nasa isip nila, lalabas sila at magbibigay ng uh, 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 itong self-learning modules. In fact, if you look at all of the dry runs, uh, meron talagang physical movement. Lahat ng video may physical movement one way or the other. But uh, again, now this is a recommendation. That's my personal recommendation. Ang League of Provinces may personal recommendation. Si GovDocs may personal recommendation. And uh, you just have to uh, take into consideration all of these recommendations because uh, these are coming from um, from the ground and also from people that we are uh, in touch with. Mr. Chair, uh, mm -hmm. we, we really appreciate talaga pong paggaling po sa inyo, Mr. Chair, at kay Gov. Daxku at sa lahat po ng ating mga senador. Talaga pong pinapahalagahan po yan ng ating mamliling briones. At alam niyo po yan, Senator Wynn, kaya nga po kaagad-agad she, she asked us to arrange a briefing para po marinig po namin ang personal. We will po, Mr. Chair, at I'm hoping for the best na in situation natin ay uh, mag-improve 
we're, we're all hoping for the best. So with that, uh, we'd like to again raise the open the floor to any comments, any last comments po on the topics uh, at hand. Um, kung meron ho kayong gustong i raise about the update or the bills, uh, feel free po to uh, to uh, uh, to uh, just raise your hand or uh, speak on the microphone. Kung wala ni mam po, uh, would like to end this uh, hearing. Uh, let me just uh, remind DepEd for some submissions as requested by the senators. Uh, number one, yung timeline po nung IRR, yung sa Kumali, sa kwesto ni Senator uh, Tolentino. Uh, number two, yung uh, underutilized private schools. Uh, this will come from the private sector, the private school uh, group, the attorney ERAP. And number three, yung security uh, as to the support that we will give our teachers in terms of health, in terms of aftercare, uh, in terms of testing. So uh, that will come from USEC and Sevilla. No? So uh, please submit this uh, to us uh, on or before um, August 19, which is one week from now. So with that, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I went one hour overboard from our uh, intended uh, uh, adjournment, but maraming salamat po sa inyong uh, uh, comments and feel free, no? so to everyone, feel free to send us your position paper on uh, the matters that we discussed earlier. Yusek Kumali.